Hey, hey, hey there, everybody. Happy Halloween to all of you. It's a spooky day, but hopefully our gameplay won't be spooky. As I'm planning on doing some more ironclad wins in Slate the Spire, or at least I hope they'll be wins. Never really sure what's going to happen when you start a new run. Hey there, Juice Box. How's it going, Skeptic? Happy Halloween. Spicy Noodle Bucket with a 47 months. What a scary number. Eek, indeed. Blinking Henry, thanks for the prime sub in the three months. Favorite Halloween candy? Probably Twix. The fun size Twix they give out. I think that, would, that was always my, uh, my go-to. And then really anything other than candy corn is good by me, usually. Skeptic with the nine months of the prime sub. Happy Halloween. Hey there, Samson. Thanks for two months. Sour candy guy? Yeah, I can respect that. Never found anybody giving out atomic warheads on Halloween, but I would have loved that if they did. One moment here. Hashtag Yellow Swag City. Thanks for the Prime sub and the six months. Who am I? Dr. Lua says, I'll be the first to say it. I'll be the one to say it. I like candy corn. I have to imagine somebody does. Otherwise, why would they make it, right? There's got to be a few enjoyers out there. But I feel like they make way more of it than there are people who actually like it. It's the filler candy, yeah. <laughs> It's the it's the fifty percent peanuts in your bag of mixed nuts. Why has it got to be half of the jar, huh? Hmm. All right, here's our uh, spire. Onset nonsense, also a certified candy corn enjoyer. Respect. Respect. Not on your team, but... I won't call you wrong. Bacon of Unrest says, I think anything you eat as a kid becomes encoded into you a bit. Well, also literally, right? Like, you... You, you break it into tiny pieces and then literally incorporate it into your body. And it stays with you for quite a long time. I'm not sure how long, actually. Hmm. Be a fun little thing to be able to know about your body. Like, what's the oldest piece of food you ate that is still here somehow? In, in atomic form. How much of me is candy? All of it. I'm basically a walking piñata. Don't have candy corn in the UK. Ah, a proper civilized nation. No, I'm kidding, but neat little fact. Uh, I, I hadn't realized it was more of an American thing. Is there actual corn in candy corn? No, definitely not. <laughs> it's like pretty much pure sugar, just kind of compacted into corn-esque kernels. But they don't even really look like corn, either. Oh, there's corn syrup. Well, yes, of course, sugar being corn syrup in this case. That does make more sense. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out if <laughs> if corn syrup meets my own criteria for containing actual corn. In a literal sense, yes, I guess it has to. I wouldn't call it corn. Is all candy actually candy corn? Yeah, unfortunately in the US, all too much of it has uh, corn syrup as the, the primary ingredient. Yippee-ki-yay, thanks for the tier two in the four months. 
Candy corn was originally called chicken feed. Slabs man. Some deranged people in Ireland hand out fruit and nuts instead of candy on Halloween. You know, that sounds pretty good. And yes, there are there are more than a few countries that ban uh, high fructose corn syrup as being a food additive. Which I think is a good thing. By and large. Did you know that candy corn contains actual candy? Well, now that's a shocker. Microwave brother, thanks for the four months. Yeah, I've I've seen that backpack battle is, is uh, going the round medals. I, I've watched a little bit of it, and uh, it's kind of neat in concept, but I have no interest in a uh, auto battler myself. None whatsoever. So, Ironclad. Streaking is the name of the game. The goal is 20 wins in a row. Which is a crazy thing to have asked of myself. But we're trying. Currently on three here. We just had an amazing run with Necronomicon Double Whirlwind Snekowai. This was a very fun run. Like, holy moly, a fun run. Let's see if we can do four. Greetings, choose. Hmm. These are some weak options. I've been thinking I wanted to try a little bit of boss swapping on the Ironclad. See how I feel about it still. I, I think it is still a, a powerful thing to do. Although there's a couple of boss relics you can get that are very bad from the start. So in order to make that a viable choice, I'd like to see a path in Act 1 that looks reasonable. Oh dear. Uh, we don't have that. We have a forced floor 6 elite with no fire. Well, that's not good. Wouldn't Curse Transform be pretty good here? Only if that curse can be removed. I guess we could do it at the shop, potentially. But that would mean going to the Burning Elite, it looks like. Tough. Tough Act 1. Matt Newts with five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Clubs, folks. Have I ever run a crown swap? Oh yeah, we've we've won many crown swaps. I've, I've done A20 heart runs on all four characters with a crown start. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's easy to do, but it is possible. Chill Nemesis, thanks for 46 months. And Scafey, thanks for the Prime sub and the two months. So we've got a Guardian at the end of the act. Our options are Remove, Max Health 7, Curse, and Transform 2, or the Boss Swap. Huh. Let's look at paths overall here. Hmm. Fighting this elite means fighting another elite. Well, we don't actually have to fight that second elite. Ooh, I like that even more. More elites overall seems like a good thing. And I like hitting the shop after the first elite. And after the chest, too. So I'm currently eyeing something like this. Mark you in red. Go up this way, too. Which is the same number of events and combats, just in a different order. Allison Rudery with a five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. Heck yeah. Noble Laser King the Space Poo says, Are select a card and get 100 gold options actively bad? I wouldn't say so. 100 gold in particular is a very consistently decent bonus. In fact, I'd be pretty content with 100 gold over any of these options and then go into this shop with 200 gold, buy a relic to fight the Burning Elite with, or buy potions or something. Um, and choose a card is also just fine. I would also be happy with choose a card over these options. 
Having one more card means you can save some health in the opening combats, and it gets you a head start on deck building for the elites and bosses too. It's definitely an advantage to start with a card reward before your first fight. The early shop doesn't strictly require hitting the burning elite. No, that's true. We can also go far, um, far right here, which is unfortunately a, a pretty bad path overall. We get one elite and then two rest sites and then fight the boss. Um, so if you had to, if we went to the shop and then bailed, you're already like giving up most of the rewards from act one, which is going to put you in a very bad position for the rest of the run. So, yes, you don't have to go to the Burning Elite, but in another sense, you do have to go to the Burning Elite, because taking the weak path is a losing play. So I'd say you're pretty committed going to that shop. So when it comes to question marks and combats early on, I think I like to have the events after the combats. Events often ask you to do things like trade health to get a reward of some kind, or if they provide upgrades, you want to have those after the card rewards. So you can get a good card and then upgrade it, rather than upgrade bash and then pick up carnage, right? You don't want to do that. I guess the big question here is, do I... I? I'm pretty limited here, I think, to the top two options. If we low roll either of the bottom options, it's going to be game over pretty quick. Although, of course, there are excellent results we could get from a boss swap, right? I could click boss swap, we can get astrolabe, I get shockwave, immolate, and double tap, and then we just kill everything. But that's probably not going to happen. Let's go in Gwen Stigwerbin. But it could happen. It could. I think I'll take out a strike. Ironclad doesn't mind losing a strike that often because, one, you still have bash and four strikes, so you're still likely to draw three energy of damage cards on a turn. And Ironclad has plenty of better attacks to add to the deck, so we're perfectly happy taking three attacks from the first three combat rewards. So let's dunk a strike here. And then I, I'm pretty sure I'm, we're taking green here. The Burning Elite seems too suicidal, although we could opt into Burning Elite if we get some good cards and potions, maybe. That would mean not hitting this shop, but we could go to this shop instead of the fire. Hmm. Iffy. Iffy, I say. The only thing we don't want to do is avoid combats. For example, we don't want to take this path with four question marks into the elite, as that would be putting us uh, too low on card rewards to actually defeat the first elite, and likely low on potions, too. I only take a gold starter if I can spend it soon. Yes, Death Raw. Um, ge my general rule is you have to spend that money before your first elite fight. Usually. You don't you don't have to. Um, but at, at the very minimum by the end of Act 1. Before the first boss. I'm gonna need some immediate output. Or else. Looks like we can heal 6 in this fight. If I'm looking at this correctly. We strike for 6 here. Next turn we're guaranteed double defend draw. So even if this attacks for 7 again... If we double defend this turn, next turn we can strike, double defend again. And then next turn it won't attack us, we can break its block. Cool. Rarely does Ironclad get a perfect first combat, I'm quite happy with that. And things continue to go perfect as we get 20 gold, maximum, a potion, not a bad one either, and a card that is going to be great. Oh, oh my. That's a fun choice. Cobra Commander has learned how needed card removes are in Monster Train. Oh yeah. 
That uh, That's a game where card removes are very, very impactful. Draw sources are few and far between, and fights are pretty much fixed in their duration, so you can't effectively gain card draw by blocking, which is what you can do in, in Slay the Spire. You can make fights last longer if you can survive them in this game, and you can use that to draw lots and lots of cards, or just get lots and lots of turns. You can't do the same thing in Monster Train, though. Hey, you're welcome, Ku Lightwing. Is Evolve best here with two elites soon, as it helps answer, answer sentries? Normally, I would say Evolve is pretty solid here for that reason. However, there are two things that speak against it Evolve right now. The first is that we're not fighting a boss that adds statuses. Two out of three Act 1 bosses add tons of status cards, but the Guardian doesn't, and so our power will be useless there. The second thing that makes me not want to do that is that we have a power potion. And in my opinion, having a power potion is pretty much already a solve for sentries on the Ironclad, because there are so many different hits that make that fight completely free. If this potion contains Evolve, or Dark Embrace, or Feel No Pain, or Combust, then or Demon Form, really, then the fight is over for free, and we have no problem. And so we don't need to add a real card to the deck to solve that fight when we have a potion that will do the same thing. Or fire breathing, yes, or fire breathing. Yeah, I'd say demon form is actually one of the, the less good hits in that situation. So the, the odds that this just outright solves sentries for us is very high. And we don't need to take cards that solve that fight when we can take cards that help with others. In this case, I'm thinking either shockwave or spot weakness, and I really like the early strength gain card. Uh, a very good way to scale into the late game, especially a single spot weakness, for example, can help us solve the champ fight if we include a true grit also. Wakarana asks, would a power like every time you draw a card gain one block, B-O-P? I don't think so. It would be less good than after image on its face. Well, not quite. You could draw more than one card per card played. I would assume that this wouldn't count your initial 5 draw during the turn. I've seen a couple modded relics that trigger when you draw, and, and they've, they haven't included the base 5 draw. If it included your base 5 draw, that'd be a different story. It would already be quite strong, as you're already looking at something that's better than Metallicize on its face. Shockwave has definitely got some great utility. Applying Weak and Vuln is excellent. Two cost early on can be a little difficult to afford. So I like but don't love Shockwave in the early game. Um, I, th I think what I'm trying to highlight is that Spot Weakness is an immediate power spike too. This lets us do damage very efficiently. It's a multiplicative with any source of vulnerable we can find. And it works really well on bosses in particular. I really, really like having a Spot Weakness. Just a really efficient strength gain card. I'm going to grab it. I mean, it's literally got the Guardian on the art, right? Who are we fighting? The Guardian. Well, spot its weakness. And Ku Lightwing, thanks for continuing that gifted sub. Grr. We are strong now. It looks like I'm going to kill the Spike Slime first. I think we go defend, strike the Spike. Next turn, one strike kills the Spike. And I can defend one or maybe two times. And having this strength gain is going to make it much easier to pick up any card that scales with strength. Heavy Blade, Sword Boomerang, Reaper, Pummel I'd love to see. Just to name a few. Get even stronger. We're at full health, that's pretty good. And we're offered a Ghostly Armor, a Flex, or a Flame Barrier. Interesting. Very interesting. Ghostly Armor versus Flame Barrier. Ghostly is more efficient in terms of block per energy spent. Flame Barrier is more total block and offers retaliatory damage, which is excellent against multi-attackers. Very good against the Heart later on, but also pretty good against the Guardian. 
Is Heavy Blade decent overall? I'm actually starting to warm up to it more. Heavy Blade's expensive and starts at relatively low damage, but it's it's good and reliable once you get past five or so strength. It's pretty dang good. Over time, my opinion on Heavy Blade has come up a bit. My opinion on Sword Boomerang has gone down substantially. Don't think you've ever regretted a Flame Barrier take? I don't think I would either, but I'm just wondering if we want uh, the Ghostly Armor more. It's a really nice eight card against Sentries. Good against Legavulin, too. I like that you can play Ghostly Armor and Bash in the same turn. Let's give this Ghostly Armor a try. I really like the efficiency of it. Compared to the so-called Flambe, although Flambe would have been perfect in this situation, blocking for 12. Uh, I guess that means I could play Bash if I wanted to here. Although I think we're better off playing two strikes. We have excess health, let's do it. Yeah. So playing Bash would have only been three more damage on the strike. We would have done eight plus three. Instead, I played two strikes for 12. We get one more damage with the line that I took. Excuse you. Well, my face though. Jawworm strikes again, I guess. Good for you, Jawworm. Good for you. Try not to take any more damage. We'll see if I can make that work. I regret almost everything. Please stop attacking me. Thank you. So we're down a few hit points to the Jawworm. Not what I wanted here, but all is well. We get a Battle Trance. Battle Trance Ghostly Armor. Actually a little bit awkward, maybe? I think that's fine. Very, very happy to have some extra card draw here. Although that would mean no additional attacks as we go into the Elite Fight. Just Spot Weakness, Ghostly Armor, Battle Trance. That, to me, does not seem like it's going to work. Hmm. We could take two more fights and go to the Burning Elite. Or we take two events and go to this combat. The other option is to take not Battle Trance. We could take Infernal Blade, although that's potentially not much better. Zonard Stark with a 51. 5-1 is the natural number following 50 and preceding 52, as well as the sixth Motskin number, telling the number of ways to draw non-intersecting cords between any six points on a circle's boundary, no matter where the points may be located on the boundary. Some fun math trivia for you. Thank you, Zuminard, for the long-time support. And the fun fact... Do I think I could handle the Burning Elite with two combats? So we're, we're very likely to get a potion, right? Over two fights, we're at 80% to get another potion into this Burning Elite. I still hold that if we fight Super Sentries, we can just solve it with a Power Potion. And we'll get two more card rewards, hopefully decent attacks, which are going to make a huge difference. You know, add an Uppercut or a Pummel or a Whirlwind or a Carnage to this deck. And we can start to talk, but as it is, we're critically weak to both Gremlin Ob and, quite frankly, the Legavulin, if our draw order isn't correct. So I'm, I'm definitely valuing... let's mark it in blue here. I'm definitely valuing going this way-ish now. These fights could go pretty badly for us, or they could go quite well. Likewise with the events. Tough. And Axmalan, thanks for the seven months of support. My kids can sign and cosign, never get anything done. They're always going on a tangent. Ah. 
Do I know of a seed that's unwinnable? Yes, I do. As long as you consider it unwinnable only for one of the four characters. Check out that link there. Uh, Ubla made a really good uh, post about it. And we know of one unwinnable seed on Ascension 20 with the silent. Yeah, with the cyan with the cyan path, we're taking battle trance. Otherwise, we might maybe want to think about thunderclap. Although I don't even think thunderclap will cut it here. I really don't like my elite fight matchups, other than sentries, for this first elite. And I don't trust that these events will give me anything at all that's useful. So I'm gonna go for the burning elite here with battle trance. And I already think this is going passably. This is a decent first, decent fight to get. This could have been, you know, slaver slime or something. That would have been worse. So we could strike three times for 27 damage. 60 minus 27 is 33. That would result in two 33 hit point medium slimes, which seems like it could be a terrible thing. Probably we should do something like Ghostly Armor and Strike twice. We need to get a good split for this fight to go well. And I think trading some health as clad is probably the way to do this. Let's see, this would bring you to 42. Can't play Bash again, that's okay. It goes to 72. If we play another one, we split. Looks like we want to play the slimed here. Get rid of this slime. Next turn, we can spot weakness double strike, potentially. Or spot weakness slime strike. I'm not sure. Getting a spot weakness off will help a lot here. We'll be frail for the rest of the fight, but that's not the worst thing. There we go. Spot weakness double strike. And then double strike kills them again with three strength. So we can hopefully kill one of the two immediately. Yes. And we can gain even more strength. All right. I'm pretty happy with how that fight went after taking a little bit of damage. I think we, we chose the right turn to sacrifice. Uh, and now we're offered some cards to work with. Infernal Blade is back, or we can just take the somewhat reliable Perfected Strike. Given that we're down a strike, it's not that good. Hmm. Maybe I'll take an Infernal Blade here. Can we upgrade Searing Blow this act? No, not not enough for, for Searing Blow to be a valid pick over Perfected Strike here. Why does he keep calling the Immolate? Infernal Blade. It's also a really good card with a uh, Blessing of the Forge. Let's grab it. Hopefully I don't regret that too much. If we can upgrade the Infernal Blade, I really like it with the Battle Trance, because it becomes a zero-cost attack at least the first time you see it. Makes Clash every time, though. Oh, we got a nice easy fight, too. Why does he keep calling the Immolate Clash, or Infernal Blade? Oh, it's a Carnage. So we can go a Spot Weakness. And I can Carnage Strike this one to kill it. But can I then do... It's gonna. The other one's going to attack for 16 next turn. I think it's better to play Defend Carnage here. Take one. Right, with three strength, this would do 11 plus 13. That doesn't kill 28. Yeah, let's do this. Perfect. Kill you. We become vulnerable, but we can full block. Kill the other one. And now I feel way better about the Burning Elite than I did the... I might have to take the clothesline, though. But yeah, I feel way better about this Burning Elite than I did about this Elite from this position. 
I do think we have to take this close line. It's a good card in Gremlin Knob, especially. Helps against Legavalin, too, with the two turns a week. Disarm against Guardian is an easy win, I agree completely, but our current really only concern is making sure we beat this fight. Against sentries, I'm really not concerned, so it's Super Legavalin and Super Gremlin Knob that we have to concern ourselves with. And I really like Clothesline with the Forge Potion for both of those fights. So I'm going to grab this Clothesline, because I think it's the only reasonable uh, card to make our elites consistent here. Let's go with TM. Hello and welcome! Glad the explanatory style helps you with the game. That's kind of my goal here, is to essentially be the, the teacher of the Spire. Showing everybody how you can survive and thrive and have a great time playing this game all at the same time. Alright, grab the clothesline and it's going to be sentries, right? No, it's Gremlin Ob with Metellus eyes. Spooky. Good turn to consider the upgrade potion then. I'll probably play the battle trance first if we hit either clothesline or bash. That's probably uh, Blessing of the Forge. Do I have any plans to do a post-mastery challenge Q&A? Yes, I am going to do a sort of um, post-mastery breakdown slash analysis, gathering together some, some stats for that. B.E. with the 28 months, thank you for the long-time support and all of the incredible help you've done for the stream. The uh... <laughs> That was not supposed to be your sub-message. I see that. The mastery mod, especially the surprise at the end, was fantastically done. So thank you, VE. All right, what does Battle Trends draw? We do get Bash, so I'm thinking we've Blessing of the Forge. We can play Upgraded Bash. We can play Infernal Blade at zero cost and then play the card it makes. And we can play a Strike Plus for 13 damage. And then probably next turn we can play the Close Line with Vulnerable. That looks pretty good to me. We shouldn't have to use the uh, other potion here. Reckless Charge is not the attack card I was hoping for, but I will take the minus one draw for 10 damage, because 10 damage. All right. What do I think is the max win rate a trained a high could achieve on a 20? Not very high. Less than a human, I think. This game is, as others are noting, simply too complicated in its interactions of mechanics to totally simulate or analyze. Hmm. Do I need to not redraw ghostly armor? I'm tempted to play ghostly armor. But it might be better to not play it so that we don't redraw it. Thankfully, next turn we have closed line, so next turn we're only looking at 18 damage incoming. We take 8 plus 18, that's not so bad. But it really sucks to not do any damage here, unfortunately. Need to make sure we're killing. Problem is, we may not kill next turn. 30 health? Um, what if we Bash Strike Reckless Charge? How much is that? We do 10 plus 13 plus 10. 33. Bummer. Guess that means there's no point in playing the Battle Trance, huh? As we're one damage short of a kill. I don't think Spot Weakness would have helped. That means we can play one Defend, yes? As next turn, we can Spot Weakness Strike Reckless Charge to kill. Let me just make sure that kills. This would be 13 goes to 19. 11 goes to 16. That's like 35. Yeah, that's more than enough. We're saving this Power Potion for another Elite Fight. Either Legavolin or Sentry is here. We may have to rest at the Fire, unfortunately. Given how this fight went.
31 gold and a Mercury Hourglass, which deals damage to all enemies every turn. More interesting cards. We could take a second spot weakness, but I'm really not sure we want to do that. This has been a weird set of card rewards. Sir Artemiel says, I notice a lot of times that you have one to damage, one to five damage short of killing. Do I think that's intentional or a happy little accident? No, that's that's a dev intentional. So here's something really cool about Slay the Spire. Most enemies have some random variation in how many hit points they have. Just a small amount of random variation. Like Gremlinob is something like 85 to 90, I think. And the result of this is that it's effectively random whether or not a particular damage contributor is going to matter in proportionality with how big that damage contributor is. For example, the Mercury Hourglass doing three damage per turn can make a difference for some enemies, depending on their hit point roll, and for other enemies, it might not. Very notably, though, bosses don't have random amounts of health. All of the bosses always have the exact same amount of health because it's meant to be a, a true check of the deck versus an exact calculation, and so there's no random variation there. But that's ultimately why you kind of see the off by one so frequently is be because the random health variation means that there's a random chance your strike plus is going to matter. And you're not so focused on hitting key damage thresholds. Uh, if we didn't have that random health amount on enemies, then it would be really important in Spire to have, for example, exactly 12 damage consistently to kill a Gray Slime or a Sneaky Gremlin. Uh, or it would be really important to hit exactly 40 to kill a sentry. Thankfully, we don't have these things that we're trying to do. I like it more this way. Every point of damage counts. I'm going to skip these cards. Let's see. 34 health and no rest after this elite for the next one if we're committing. And I think we can. As long as I rest with, this, with these relics and cards... I think we're okay. I don't like that I'm resting here, but I'm okay with it. If it means getting three elites, I'm okay with it. Let's do it. I think it makes sense that... Um, Nemesis and Giant Head also don't have random amounts of health. However, um, Reptomancer does have random health, right? I know the daggers do. So is this where we use the potion? I think so. We'd love a Feel No Pain in particular. There it is. Give me that. And this fight should be no problem whatsoever now. Don't quite have enough damage to kill this sentry. One short with either triple strike or spot weakness double strike. I guess taking 10 isn't the worst thing in the world. And the hourglass will chip away quite consistently here, so we don't need to focus on doing damage that much. We can just prioritize survival. Hey. It's not enough block. Curses. attack here. Give me a real feel no pain. Get an ancient T-set. When we enter a rest site, start the next combat with two energy. 
Get a True Grit, which I'm pretty okay with. We mentioned that as a way to beat Champion later. It's also good against the Guardian now. This could be another Gremlin Knob coming up, though. That's a bit of a concern. I don't really want another Infernal Blade or Thunderclap. I'll take a True Grit. Hopefully we get a potion from this fight. We also get another Relic here. It's going to be a rare or uncommon Relic, as you can tell by the large chest artwork here. This black hexagonal design has the rarest Relics and the most money. We get 82 gold, which I think might be a maximum roll for money. Makes going to a shop a lot more appealing. As well as a Shuriken. If you play three attacks in one turn, gain a point of strength. Ironclad can really struggle to take advantage of the Shuriken, but right now I'm not keen on turning down any advantage, so I'll take this. b Braun, thanks for the Prime sub and the 30 months. Yeah, any zero-cost attack just got substantially better, that's for sure. Fun little uh, Lice fight. Great example of the random amount of health, meaning that the clothesline is an exact kill on one of these lice, but not the others, meaning that the Mercury Hourglass affected one more than the others, essentially. Kind of cool. That means we can do clothesline, ghostly armor, take only two here. I don't see any other better line. We could go defend ghostly armor, but then we take three. Let's just kill one. Math is definitely hard, yeah. <laughs> the math tax strikes us all. Okay, we do get a potion. Not a very exciting potion, but anything will do. Am I going to take this thunderclap out of sheer desperation? Probably not. I wasn't about to fight an elite, I would consider armaments here, as an upgraded armaments with a battle trance can do wonders. It's a, it, an amazing reversal of the usual here, that on Ironclad we're struggling to find attack cards. Normally it's the other problem, is that you're fighting Guardian at the end of Act 1 and you see zero block cards the entire act. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out, actually. Although, we haven't seen a second win yet. And I would like one. A heal or a card remove offers the cleric. Hmm. I wish I could remove another strike here. I guess we could remove a defend? It's not the worst thing in the world. Or we can take the heal, and then we're definitely good to, uh, to get out of the act. It's also cheaper. Hmm. That's a genuinely quite a tough call. Heal eliminates any concerns I have about Gremlin Ob, even if we completely worst case scenario, we'll be fine. Heal would mean, yeah, not being able to buy a rare relic. Um, well, I think with the money from the Elite, we probably could anyway. I'm not sure we're going to go to this shop. I might want to go to an Act 2 shop instead, with 400 plus gold. We are not going to do well against Nob if I remove a Strike, so we'd have to remove a Defend. I think I'll take the heal. Yeah. That's what I thought. Could have drawn in a worse order, certainly. Let's just do strike close line here. Let the ghostly go. Consider using the essence of steel. Alright, this at least gives me a point of strength, but I'm not thrilled we bottom decked both bash and spot weakness here. This is fine though. So what do we think? Do we use this? I think we're gonna want some help. We're definitely taking a hit next turn, so this saves at minimum 7 hit points. It 
It's nice in the Guardian fight, though. I'm gonna try to save this for Guardian. Do 16, bring it to 24. Strikes will do 10. Okay, so we can kill pretty easily next turn. I wouldn't want to battle trance. What are the odds we actually draw enough to kill here? We just have to not draw all four skills, really. Hmm. It's definitely a possibility we don't get a kill next turn. Battle trancing could make the problem worse, right? If I battle trance, we draw three strikes, then we have a terrible draw pile. And the knob is doing more damage, so I don't think there's any reason to battle trance. We should just bash strike. So 21. Can't math correctly. That one strength. That means just clothesline was a kill. Yeah, all the more reason not to have used uh, battle trance there. And a dad joke, dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Crocodus. Did you hear about the vampire who became a prolific inventor? Probably not. His inventions never saw the light of day. Here's Heavy Blade. I'm also tempted by uh, bloodletting. The boo this man. <laughs> I might actually want Heavy Blade. Did I hear about the Penguin Inventor? Her inventions never got off the ground. Hey there, Samamir. Yeah, Daylight Savings time for me will change on uh, the 3rd. November 3rd here. This upcoming weekend. So there will be an hour shift in the stream time soon. For those who aren't in my time zone. What about the T-Rex inventor whose inventions never reached very far? Why did the Candyman always have Bs? He didn't st study hard enough for A's. Cylon Detector, thanks for the Prime sub. Sorry you're late, but welcome. Catching us here at the end of Act 1, I'm choosing Bloodletting or Heavy Blade. We have Shuriken for Heavy Blade 2. This Heavy Blade's actually kind of spicy. Bloodletting can be something that powers a whole run, though. And it can help us have enough energy to use the Shuriken. really like Bloodletting. Let me grab that. And then I, I think I'm not going to the shop. I'm going to upgrade what? Do we upgrade Infernal Blade now? I think not. Consider something like Battle Trance True Grit. As our two upgrades, we can draw more cards that way. We can play more cards now. Spot Weakness, also a viable upgrade. I really like Battle Trance True Grit, though, for the Guardian fight. Let's try that. True Grit first. And transform a card. Okay, cool. Let's get rid of another strike here. See what it turns into. I'm pretty happy with almost anything going into the Guardian. We get Exhum. Very neat. We can now exhum a card that has been exhausted, such as Infernal Blade. That actually makes the Infernal Blade upgrade a lot better. Maybe I'll upgrade Infernal Blade here. Yeah, let's do it. Make this zero cost. That way we can return it at zero cost plate again. So we get we get to do this discount twice. 
Whereas if we upgrade Exhum, we only get the discount one time when we play the Exhum. We want this discount more. Heck. Really wish that was the strike card. I might get hit next turn for quite a lot of damage. This is a really miserable five energy turn, unfortunately. Let's see what happens. Not gonna play it though. Ouch. It's not enough damage, right? Not spot weakness bash anger. Let me just double check that. That'd be 11 plus 13. No, not enough. So we are taking this hit. But we didn't miss the spot weakness. That's a good sign. I'm just gonna let this happen. Don't want to duplicate anger yet. Definitely glad we took that heal. This deck needs to shrink, even the base defense. the defend if I want. Seems like a really good time for it. Come back. Ghostly spot weakness. True Grit looks really good here. True Grit, another strike. Also not a bad idea to close line, so that we weak next next turn. We're gonna be taking 20 damage next turn. There's no way I can fully block it. Don't like how this is going. Also play the anger, might as well. We need to start dealing damage here. Having nine strength means we can end this fight pretty quickly though. defend. Take just a little bit more. Not gonna play Bash. Although Bloodletting Bash would have been nice. It's time to go for the kill. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna get it. Okay, let's lose the spot weakness now. Tempted to close line over bashing. Let's do it. One week for next turn. That might kill me. health. No, I can play defend close line. We'll barely live. But we gotta do more damage here. We go to two health, so I can't play anger. Man, not quite enough damage or quite enough. Well, actually, no, it is enough block. Never mind. We're still weakened. Thank you, clothesline. Almost panicked there. All is fine. We're not dead. In fact, it looks like we're winning. Easy. Whew. 
Talk about a close one, though. GG. Still no potion, huh? All right, here's the good news. We're allowed to take Reaper with multiple sources of strength, and I have an Exhume, as well as a Bloodletting. That said, Fiendfire and Immolate are also both very potent here, offering a lot of damage to eliminate fights, which is currently something we don't always have. That said, I really like this Reaper. Very, very powerful. And we have a lot of money to spend at a shop, too. Was upgrading Infernal Blade a mistake at that campfire in retrospect? It might have been better to upgrade either Clothesline, Battle Trance, or Ghostly Armor to make sure that the Guardian fight was easier. I upgraded Infernal Blade partially, partially in anticipation of making Act 2 a bit easier. Uh, but we definitely kind of skin of our teeth to that. Notably, we would have been dead without the Essence of Steel. Glad I preserved it. Reaper is such a game breaker for me. With strength, this card can be so, so powerful. Makes something like a coffee dripper very easy to take. If we get four energy, we'll thrive. If we get pyramid, we'll thrive. There's a few other things that would be great too. Sightly size, thanks for the 34 months of support. What are the boss options here? Hmm. Sozu with no potions, or Mark of Pain, or Slaver's Collar. All of these provide energy under different circumstances. Sozu and Mark of Pain have downsides, pretty steep ones. Whereas the Collar only works during boss or elite fights, meaning we're left out to dry during normal fights. That said, we have some energy cheats here. Bloodletting and Infernal Blade will allow us to have a burst of power during shorter fights. And so I'm quite happy with the Slaver's Collar overall. How much do I think the Mastery Challenge helped me to improve as a player? Not as much as I was hoping, actually. I, I don't necessarily feel like I became a master even though that was the name of the challenge. I don't feel like I, I became an excellent A20 player as a result of the mastery challenge, but I do help like it continued to fuel my interest in the game. And that's important. I'd say more than a uh, learning the game challenge, the mastery was about not burning out on Spire for me. There are some cards that I appreciate more because of the Mastery Challenge, though. Let's grab a uh, Slaver's Collar. I'm really hoping we can get an early shop here in Act 2. Buy some potions, buy some stuff. Uh oh. No! <laughs> Classic. All right. We have one of those Act 2s ahead of us. Good news is we'll have bonus energy during the Elite Fights. Before we jump into analyzing what we're supposed to do here in full, I need a quick bathroom break, Twitch chat, so I'll be back in just a few short minutes to tackle this Act 2. Be right back.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Thank you for that moment of patience. So, all of the shops are behind elites. We have to kill at least one elite to get to the shop. I'm thinking we probably want to get this one down. Go to this store. We could maybe opt for a lot more elites before the shops, but I have a hard time imagining we're going to be able to pull that off. At the end of the act, our boss is Collector. Makes me happy about the Mercury Hourglass, but we're going to want some better AoE damage. At least we can sustain ourselves with this Reaper, perhaps. Especially Double Reaper, since we can exhume it. Play it again. I don't think we want to do five combats, although it might be correct with the Reaper to just take a whole bunch of combats. I feel like we'll get worn down even though we can heal, just because we can't do enough damage. It's really the regular fights I'm more concerned about than the Elite. That said, we do want at least one potion, ideally two. I'm thinking we start out here. Then we have the option for an event or more combats if necessary. If I don't get a potion from either of these two combats, I'll probably opt for another one. But it also depends on uh, how much health we gained or lost during these fights. Greetings, bird nerds. I see you're already going to cause me some problems here. Hard to gain health from these creatures via Reaper. At least the Mercury Hourglass will do a ton of damage each turn. Unfortunately, our bloodletting has not been drawn at the correct time. Once again, so I'm not even going to play it here. I figure we target the one with the least amount of health. Not that it makes a huge difference. Oh ho! If only that knocked Bird out of the air here. Striking each enemy for a bit. I think we probably want a True Grit and then Whirlwind. Unfortunately, this will only do two damage each time we spin. Oh well. Better than nothing, I guess. Really wishing we had the flame barrier now. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Yikes. What's the play? Block for 20, take 9. Don't love it, but it's not terrible. Yeah, if only we'd drawn the Bloodletting turn 2, right? Then this turn I could play Spot Weakness Reaper, heal for 21. That'd be nice. Doesn't feel like we have much of an advantage if I do anything other than block. Let the Hourglass do all the work for this fight, I guess. Oh no. There we go. Perfect. Now I can hit them each four times. Knock them all out of the air. Uh, I think I'm going to go defend Bloodletting Whirlwind. Hit them each exactly four times. We could also go Spot Weakness Bloodletting Whirlwind, but we don't want to do that. As they would all die. I don't want them to die. I want them to be on the ground, ready to be Reapered. So defend Bloodletting Whirlwind. This one perishes, but these two stay alive. We can get some health back. Not much, but some. Definitely not much. I'll take it. Three health. 20 gold and no potion. Rage is here. Burning Pact is here. I like Burning Pact with bloodletting. I like Burning Pact with four energy. Like burning packed with exhaust powers that we're gonna pick up. Don't know if we can handle that in the short fights though. Gotta go bash perfect strike here. Chosen's very much a damage race. Hope we can kill the other first is the winner. Would have been nice to draw a strike there or something. But so it goes. I 
Is there anything to exhume? We could exhume ghostly armor. It's going to add a lot of dazes to the draw pile, though. I can exhume Infernal Blade. I can exhume Infernal Blade, although that's, again, two days added to the draw pile. Probably our best line is something like Spot Weakness True Grit Strike. Did we manage to master the Spire? We sure did. And the next turn, we're hopefully not getting attacked again. Dang it. That's a good draw, though, the Battle Trance. Excellent draw. Will it be enough, though? I'm not sure. Eighteen health, we gotta do. Oh, good. We have exactly eighteen damage to prevent thirty-six incoming. Very close to being a disaster here. You can see our health is trending downwards in these fights for now. So we're not able to get the bloodletting and the other cards together to actually make something good happen. What if I added a second battle trance? Would that make things more reliable? I think it would make them better. Probably. We could also definitely consider a Pommel Strike. Deal 9, draw 1. We do kind of want more attacks. It's also good with a Shuriken. Let's take this Pommel Strike. And I think since we got one potion, let's take the event and then one more fight. We can rest here if necessary. Remove a card, says Cleric. You know what? Don't mind if I do. Is it time to lose a basic defend? The Shuriken really demands that we have these strikes sometimes. I'm going to lose a defend. Am I concerned about our low percentage of upgraded cards in this deck overall? A little bit, yeah. Not for the upcoming Elite fight, because we have a Blessing of the Forge. So I think we're, we're on track to make it to the shop currently, which is my only real priority at the moment. And I'm actually quite happy to see these two. This is not so bad. Although this turn one is pretty bad. This is a fight we can potentially heal for a lot with the Reaper. Do this as our opening gambit here. It's all dependent on the spot weakness actually working though, which might not happen. Ooh, well, this is good. Thunderclap, Reaper for 12 health. And let's true good to defend. Please block again, sir. Son of a gun. Now you gotta die. Can exhume the Infernal Blade. That might be enough. Let's see. Bash, strike, pummel strike does 8 plus 9 plus 13 is 30. Uh. Hmm. Really not willing to use the Blessing of the Forge here. I guess let's see what the Infernal Blade is. Unless I want to try exhuming Reaper instead. Taking 18 more damage is an option. This way. Take the 18. It'll be hard to get that back, but I think we can do it. I think we need to get this just down to the Mystic, though. For this to work well. Let's 
use you. Actually, that's helpful. Thank you for attacking me. Reaper now, but that doesn't seem worth it. Okay, here goes. It's already going passively. You heard me. damage to... Actually, no, we want her to attack again, but she'll attack for too much, yes? Yes, too much. go Thunderclap Reaper. That's a pretty good heal. Not quite as much as I took from the Centurion, but it's going to be hard to get more strength at this point. Can't use the Shuri Cannon because we'll kill by playing three attacks. This would be pretty difficult to do more. I'm just going to take my, my W and get out of here. Don't love it, but it's an acceptable amount of health to get back. Ever want a war cry? Not really. Hmm. Net result of that fight was plus one health. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, I would I would consider this flex a lot more strongly if it had an upgrade on it. As it stands, it doesn't feel like it's good enough. So I'm gonna skip. And we're going to head into our elite fight here. Do we need to rest? Sure would be nice to upgrade either Pommel Strike or Blood... Actually, Pommel Strike upgrade looks great. Battle Trance upgrade's also pretty good. Anything that draws cards, really. Oh, hello. Maybe we don't have to go to this shop, then. We get a shop before the elite and... What a shop it is. There is a brimstone and a disarm in this shop. And a heavy blade. That's hard to turn down. That is definitely hard to turn down, although I don't like skipping the other two relics that are here. The Gremlin Horn especially is really good for getting through Act 2 Elites and really good for getting through the Collector. But man, Brimstone is strong. It's also cheaper, which is pretty good. I won an Ironclad 20 times in a row. How many Brimstone runs would I expect? One or two. Just one or two. As a reminder, we already got a Brimstone run that won in uh, one of our previous three runs. We even didn't have a Disarm for that fight. Although we did have Corruption, I believe. Gremlin Horn is a great way to get to Act 4. I really like the start of this deck for the late game, too. What does the Brimstone do? It gives you two strength per turn, and it gives all enemies one strength per turn. It's very scary against the heart in particular, although I find with a Disarm it's really not that bad. 
essentially allows the player fast, rapid scaling, making this Reaper become very obscene. Ah. But the Gremlin Horn is a very good competitor. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Dingus Buttikus. Why are mummies good at keeping secrets? They know how to keep something under wrap. Casper V56, thanks for the 29 months of support. Oh yeah, and not only one disarm, but two, right? We have the exhume, so we can even exhume disarm with brimstone. That's mighty powerful. This is a legitimately tough choice. I think I'm taking the disarm either way. It's either disarm plus gremlin horn plus carter move or brimstone disarm carter move heavy blade. Yeah, gremlin horn is just so reliable here. I'm going to buy the Gremlin Horn. I've had a recent uh, Brimstone win. We're also going to go, yeah, Disarm, Carter Move. Let's lose a strike now. Having the uh, Smiling Mask is nice. That means we can still go to this shop if we want to. Although I think we're going to take three Elites from here. We can go to this shop, get a Carter Move. I also no longer need to feel, uh, feel any need to rest whatsoever before this first Elite. So let's upgrade our card draw. Let's upgrade the Pummel Strike. All right, finally fights where we have four, uh, four energy. And even more than that sometimes. Emokinesis, huh? Well, that certainly is a good looking upgrade potion. Upgrade Disarm, Spot Weakness, and Reaper all at the same time. This is probably the hardest of the elites for us, huh? And that disarm is upgraded for when we exhume it, too. I say we upgrade potion now. I think the others will be easier. I don't think I'm going to get another chance to play this. So let's get our 9 health and the 1 strength here. Burning Pact the Bash. Close line, True Grit Defend. Burn the deck down. Play bloodletting here. We can go close line and block properly. And then we should see zero damage next turn. Yeah, zero times five. Good. Easy book. Get a ceramic fish, nine gold per card we add, as well as a liquid memories potion. And our choice of second wind or fiend fire. Man, fiend fire with uh, brimstone would have been good. Fiend fire still is pretty good in my book. As a way to finish fights or exhaust a lot of cards, whatever you want. Without any exhaust powers, we didn't see a feel no pain or dark embrace yet. 
So I'm not ready for a second wind, I don't think. Take another upgrade. We could take a fight at this point. Fights might actually be better than upgrades in certain circumstances, although I do like upgrading the Fiend Fire and, as aforementioned, the Battle Trance. Burning Pack could use an upgrade also. Let's upgrade the Battle Trance next. Keep taking elite fights here. This is looking really good. We've got a really good Act 2 thus far. Get another large chest. More money. 71 gold in this one. Plus an Eternal Feather, which will heal us at every rest site. I'll happily take that. Help keep us topped up. Let's fight some more stuff. This shop's actually going to be good. We'll have plenty of money for it. And once again, the Ancient Tea Set is actually doing something, allowing me to play Bash, Clothesline, and Strike all in the same turn here. Although Triple Slavers are pretty spooky here. Might want to consider Liquid Memories to kill the Red Slaver right now. Block 10, gain an energy. It's also a pretty good potion for later, just saying. And I've got a Reaper for healing. And we're not getting weak. So I think I should just defend here. Do some health. Hmm. We're guaranteed next turn. Let's go spot weakness. Ghostly armor then. Reaper with four strength. We can maybe do it twice. We'll get some, but not all of our hit points back. It's not great that we're weakened either, but what can you do? Oh, you can fender clap is what you can do. I'll take it. I'm out of here. Don't expect to rest much, but uh, maybe if we do, the Regal Pillow is okay. Do we want an Anger? Zero cost attack is great with a Shuriken. And it provides fuel for these exhaust things as well, which we may need later on. I like having a uh, self generating card. Stack master. I like that. Just get to the campfire run. Oh, a large group of bandits. And we've got Gremlin Horn and Reaper. Smells like free health to me. Notably, they don't count as an elite fight, though. This is not a great turn one. I'm going to go bash anger on Romeo. A large group of friends. Grab him. I've been grabbed. Could do Reaper, then Pummel Strike. Reaper heals for not that much. Might be better to Pummel Strike first. Ah, okay. Yes, we can play Reaper, Bloodletting, Fiendfire. Disarm point A here. Actually, no, I can't disarm. Just Reaper. Yes, I can, actually. Never mind. We'll have more energy. From the Horn. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, we can do Disarm, then Fiendfire. Deal 35. Take 8 at the very end here, but that's fine. It's also not the end of the story, right? We have Exhume still, so we can get back Reaper and do more if we wish to.
Perfect. Excellent. Get a red mask, making enemies weak on turn one, and a blood potion for healing, making this final elite nice and safe. And also take a shrug, cleave, or true grit. Guess a shrug is fine. Take some block here. All right, gremlin leader, more like gremlin bleeder. That's what I'm saying. No strength for you. Ow. Can exhume, disarm, or ghostly if we need to. This kind of sucks. This is not good. This is good, though. That enemy does not intend to attack. These enemies do. Draw order, unfortunately. But now, fiend fire. All right, let's try not to instantly kill Grim Leader. I'm gonna burn six cards here. Currently, there are seven others in hand. This will bring Leader to ten health after the hourglass, and then we can exhume Reaper, maybe. Perfect. Exact lethal with Reaper. 30 hit points, please. Thank you. We got an old coin. 300 gold. Okay, the shop's going to be actually awesome. As we have over 500 gold. And what's that? A clash... Pl no, another Reaper? Another Reaper is pretty cool. I do somewhat regret not taking Brimstone. I'm going to be honest. Still taking it, though. Upgraded Clash. My... My precious. Oh, no. Crud. That's not the turn one we wanted here. Disarm, where are you? Gonna take so much damage here. Heck. But my face... There we go. Perfect. Great example of a regular fight we really struggle against. Let's hope we can kill with Fiendfire here. Reaper will be seven damage. Yeah, just seven damage. And then it gets four block. So Reaper Anger won't kill. So we should probably exhume Infernal Blade then. And we can always, I think, always kill with Clothesline here. Just bloodletting. So we might as well exhume the Infernal Blade first. 
exhume the clash. That'll loop. Could drink the blood potion, pick up the fire potion for the collector fight. I guess I might as well. Here's another heavy blade being offered. I think it's a pretty good idea to grab it since we're so committed to strength at this point. Oh yeah, Blood Pot does nothing because of Eternal Feather. Maybe I should have just kept it. Too late now. Huh. Mummified Hand. Makes a card in hand free whenever we play a power card. Unfortunately, the deck has no power cards, and I'm not keen on buying Rupture either. Hmm. Another Pummel Strike's not terrible. Card removes good. Overall, not impressed with the shop much. I guess we could buy the Mummy Hand. But it's just kind of preemptively taking something that we're not sure is good. Have I played Backpack Hero? Yes, I have Oxycontin. We might be taking a look at uh, the release, the full release of Backpack Hero when it comes out. Ah. How's it going, Boss Lowski 69 Hello. Uh, The bloodletting allows us to benefit from the rupture. It's not much, though. Although, with all our exhaust and draw, we could make it pretty decent, actually. In the absence of being able to buy anything else, it does seem pretty good. Again, I'm, I'm desperate for any strength gain power or exhaust power, so we're going to aggressively click on Feel No Pains and Dark Embraces. You know what? Let's do it. I'll take the Pummel Strike, too. That's where I'm going to stop, though. And we're going to upgrade, I think, Bloodletting now. But I can play more cards on these turns. Now that we have tons of card draw on this deck and we've removed a lot of the starter cards. This is becoming a lot more consistently good. Upgrading Heavy Blade was also potentially viable there. Fun fact. So our goal in a lot of fights is to get rid of all the basic stuff so I can play tons of cards each turn. Go Disarm, Close Line, Heavy Blade. Can exhume disarm if I want to. I think I'm just going to exhaust this defense. It's a pretty good turn one. Spot weakness always working on the minions in this fight is pretty good. Looks like I can kill a minion with a fire potion on this turn. That might not be a bad idea. Gets me a draw and an energy. Might get me a point of strength if I draw an attack card, which is highly likely to. Sure, let's do it. Don't feel like it's that good of a potion for next act. Defend fire. Okay, lose the defend. Defend fire. Get that strength. Defend fire. Bloodletting, Bash, Reaper on the boss here. Let's do that. Gets me another point of strength. We can kill this little minion next turn during the Mega Debuff. Uh, show me spot weakness, please. Dang. Very well. Nice 
Nice big bonk. Zoom Infernal Blade. I'm okay with that. We're at full health here. Wow. It's squished. Okay, we have 7 health, full strength, and the Collector is down to 100 hit points. This looks like it's going to go pretty well for us here. Fire looking strong. Let's go Pummel Strike first here. Close line ghostly or get to bash fiend fire. I don't want to take so much damage. Could blood letting to bash. Probably should have burst. Yeah, I could also spot weakness. I should definitely have done that first. It's alright. Looks like we have a kill this turn anyway. Definitely. GG! It's 72 bucks in Entropic Brew, which can fill all our potion slots with random stuff. And here's Corruption, making all of our skills at zero cost. Or a fight, as well as making a random card in our hand free. That looks pretty good. That'll work really well if we can find any power that triggers on exhaust. Just a quarter of a hit point? Not so. We're going to get that one hit point back next act. The healing. I'll take the power. Hmm. Secret Bark Tiny House Cursed Key. Cursed Key is even more energy, but gives us a random curse upon opening a chest. I think with the Mummy Hand and the Corruption and the Bloodletting and the Gremlin Horn, we probably don't need more than four energy per turn. Hey, Nate and Sal, hoping the stream provides a little bit of serenity in a crazy, crazy world for you. I actually don't mind Sacred Bark at all here. Double strength potions could really help us out in the late game. Tiny house is okay. We get a bit of gold. Can't use the potion. But the five max health is good. The random upgrade's probably good. Card reward could be a power. I think I'm gonna go Sacred Bark here. Let's get more out of potions. Interesting to not be taking an energy relic. In fact, we'll only have three base energy during the non-elite fights. Maybe that was a mistake. But I think we're going to be good overall. I do plan on taking a lot of fights. A lot of elite fights, that is. And a lot of regular fights, too. We want to minimize question marks. The goal here, get lots of card rewards. And ideally, lots of shops, too. In order to... Maximize our finding of powers. I want to go to this shop. But I'm looking for just card rewards galore here. You have to skip two elites for this shop? That's not worth it. Actually, no, I can go to this elite, right? One elite for this shop. That might be worth it. Some fights are gonna suck, like Darklings. Darklings could be trouble for us. You're not too much trouble, though. Especially not with turn one corruption. Make the whole hand free. Make the whole deck free. Set up. Just kill. These aren't powers. 
Armaments isn't the worst thing. It'd be nice to be able to upgrade one or two cards here or there. When you take Brimstone, what's the plan to not get murdered by heart, says Death Raw. You want Disarm is number one. Weakness via Clothesline or Shockwave or Uppercut is number two. And then Winning is number three. You only have to survive one or maybe two cycles against heart if you take Brimstone. Because you should be able to win the fight in seven turns or less. All right, these jerks are going to be a problem. Thankfully, we get turn one spot weakness, at least. Overall, though, I'm a little worried about this fight. So we only have three energy per turn. Might have to use the liquid memories here. Good news is, though, we can even if we take a lot of damage, we can stick around and potentially just heal it all back with a Reaper. So I'm not going to panic yet. a pummel. Hmm. You should pummel through your block so I heal more. Although 14's already to full health. This is fine. This will do 50 damage currently. We'll kill you. Except. I'll take my exit happily. We want to power through. Wish we had more powers. I'll take this. It's a card that can create other cards. <clears> hmm. <throat> Another bad power, fire breathing. Smells to me like we want the Ori here. We get to look at five different card rewards. Looking for more cards. Pretty happy with card remove, too. The Quarry. Could also YOLO on something like Transmutation. I'm not going to try to make Fire Breathing work here. Give me powers. That's a power. There's a power. Feel no pain. Okay. Armaments plus. Heavy Blade plus. Shrug and Trench Arma. All right. I like the Seeing Red too, actually. Uppercut's not bad either. It's nice to have some more weak and vuln in the deck. It doesn't have a plus on it like the Heavy Blade does, but that might not be the worst thing. That's right, and we get nine gold for each card we take, too. Nice. How many upgrades am I going to get? How much card draw do I have? Still enough, I think, to make this Seeing Red feel worth it. Let's go uppercut. Take all five cards. Okay, I feel better about the deck now. Quite a lot better. Yeah, we'll take the... Yeah, it could have taken marbles there, but we'll take the uh, remove instead. And I'm really hoping we can find another power. One power is good, but we can do better. 
Ooh, free clothesline all day. Give him the blip flop. Perfect. Each turn, this enemy will attack us. And each time we strike them, they have a, they'll change their attack to a different random one. Which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending. <clears throat> one of the attacks curses you, the big swirly. Debuff of Doom. We'll do that. Our goal is to not let that happen. Good enough. Concerning. Good. Definitely want a Dark Embrace here. Dark Embrace would change things in a huge way for this run. Zoom spot with this. Usually take this fight pretty slow and steady. Although as we run out of block cards, it can become more of an issue. Liquid Memories or Get Cursed. I guess I'll use the Liquid Memories. Good talk. There we go. We get a Gambler's Brew in replacement. I'm perfectly happy with that. How about a Body Slam? Hmm. Body Slam could do a lot of damage in a deck like this. But we'd need the other powers. If we get a Dark Embrace, I don't think it'll matter. Because we have Anger. I think we're fine. This fight might not go well. Get the Constrict debuff, applying a flat 12 damage per turn. And again, we're on 3 energy per turn, which is really not enough, as we've been learning. Definitely not enough. And eventually, that's going to backfire on us, like right here. Can't even play the Field of Pain. So we take a full 37 damage here to the face. Not really much I can do about it either. Feel a lot of pain. Let me take 37 again and die instantly. Now we're fine. For some definitions of fine. Only for some, though. Do have an Eternal Feather. I'm actually a little worried we might not be able to beat Giant Head if we encounter them. Play the scene red, huh? Did not. Hmm. 
Trench or Immolate? Do you kind of struggle to hit the daggers? I think it'll be fine, though. I don't feel like I need Immolate. First Act, three bosses, Awakened one? Well, we might want Immolate, actually. Are we okay against Nemesis? Only if Fiend Fire lines up correctly. Definitely in a bit of a pickle here. That said, this looks like a great turn one. With upgraded Feel No Pain and Disarm. Might as well play the upgraded Reaper for free here. Get five health back. Pretty hard to hit this enemy for real damage. If we get 45, we always have the Gambler's Brew, but the Disarm takes care of the multi-hits pretty consistently, at least. Get rid of Bloodletting. There's the 45, but we got Corruption just in time. So we should be able to block this, no prob. Good. Survive. Play this for strength. Yeah. Also makes it an exhumed target. Potentially get more hit points off at this turn. Let's do that. Full health, a relic that doesn't do a whole lot for us, and more cards that we already have. Definitely running out of card rewards here. Are we in a desperate enough place that we choose to take another card reward rather than upgrading a card? Because we can always do this. That might be correct here. I guess I could upgrade Uppercut, that's pretty good. Or can recall in hope of upgrading something else. Now let's upgrade. Um, let's recall for first. I'm gonna skip out on that second shop. You screwed me. Emily says, I feel like a fair few of your recent ironclad runs have ended in a desperate scramble to find a Dark Embrace Act 3. It's definitely tough if you're counting on just Dark Embrace specifically. We don't need just Dark Embrace, but it would be the one card that would solve things the most easily for us. Heck. Double heck. Thank you.
good luck to us. Gotta take the key over the boot. We face the Reptomancer. Not so afraid of her. 23, perfect. So we uppercut you, then the Hourglass kills you at the beginning of the next turn, giving me an energy and a card draw. I'm taking 32, though. Probably. Let's try not to go more in this one. Okay, what can we do here? We want to kill this dagger. And we can Repto. Maybe we don't want to kill the dagger. We can just block for a ton. Zooming an infernal blade. I'm trying to figure out how much I'm allowed to get rid of here. True bit fiend fire is fine, I think. The Reaper is also an option. Does 48 damage to Repto? Next turn I can't kill the dagger though, huh? They'll be attacking for 25, and I've only got two attacks of the draw pile. I probably should kill them now, then. Fine. Perfect block. Turn, but that's all right. Right, you just stay nice and weak, okay? Right, summon more daggers. Alright, we get through the Repto fight with relatively little trouble. Calipers are here! Lose 15 block rather than all of your block at the start of each turn, and what's that? A feel no pain plus. Okay. Now we have a stew going. Now I kind of wish we'd taken those entrenches we'd seen, but that's fine. We have a way to generate lots of block, tons and tons of block, and if we generate too much block at once, we can keep it. These are very valuable things. Excellent finds. Three more card rewards, this act. Still hoping for powers. Dropkick plus. Power. Please don't explode on me. I'm being attacked. It's not good. I don't have to gamble here. If you get double exploded, it's going to be a bad time. No, this seems fine. Good. Kill you, kill you. What? <laughs> 
before we found either Feel No Pain. I can gamble for five. There's actually no guarantee that uh, I will do much better here. I don't really want to take 26 going into the Elite, though. All right, I'll do it. That's a little bit better. <laughs> Help! Sometimes that can happen against these two. If they're adding four days per turn, you can really get stuck by destroying all the days over and over again. Terrifying, man. Okay, we get a potion back immediately. I'll take another shrug, especially with the calipers here. When you've got corruption, I often say there's no such thing as too many shrug it offs. And we're not fighting Giant Head, which I'm very happy about. Zavanavaz with 52 months. Talk about a streak of subage. Holy moly. Well done. Thank goodness for calipers here. Hmm. This would happen sooner or later. Everything comes to an end. Disarm here. It's for safety. Azrael, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Population U. Seeing a little bit of frame dippage. Jeez, this has been a bad nemesis fight. Finally retain some block. We've got lots of burns. We really have to end this fight very quickly or we're totally toast here. This is really bad, actually. Uh, what a bastard. GG. We got completely hosed on that draw order. I don't know if we could have played this fight any differently to stay alive. Uh, we drew all the attacks on the block turns, all the blocks on the attack turns, and we got completely killed by uh, Burns adding to the deck. Tough. Really tough. Damn it. Damn it. Don't feel good about that one. That was a sucky death. That was a tough run from start to finish, actually. Definitely going to continue with Ironclad. 
could we have done differently on this run? Losing to Nemesis so thoroughly. First time was fine. The second time he just killed us. Freaking variance check. Ugh. The only evolve we saw was floor one, and I had to skip it because of Guardian. Hmm. If only we'd had the boot! Oh my god, the boot actually would have saved our life. <laughs> oh, that's a that's really funny. We needed the boot. Should have skipped the shuriken. It wasn't doing anything. We needed the boot, not the shuriken. I think Body Slam only would have made us more vulnerable to Nemesis. Hmm. Maybe the Immolate could have made a difference. Would have been one more attack to draw on the uh, turns we needed the damage. I wonder how this would have gone if we'd taken the Brimstone over the uh, Gremlin Horn. I don't regret the choice of Gremlin Horn one bit. I think that was a great pick, and it worked out very well for us. Right up to the Reptomancer fight, too. 83 damage. What a joke. Gremlin Horn Battle Trance can be a bit of a non-bow at times. This was still the bulk of our card draw and doing a lot of work in most fights to keep us alive. The inability of the deck to cycle quickly enough was definitely a part of its problem. But I don't know, we just got like super countered by the pattern on, on Nemesis there. Blah. Well, Twitch chat, I'm going to take a quick break here, refill the legs, stretch the water, grab a snack, back in five to ten minutes, and we'll go again as the clad start a new streak here. Keep in mind Nemesis is a potential way to die. Although, again, I think we could have died in a similar way to the giant head, I'm going to be honest. Didn't feel like we quite scaled enough. It was really hard to get the, the premium cards on this run. Act 1 and Act 2 were both uh, desolate in terms of quality cards to find. Oh well. Back in a few minutes, Switch Chat, when I return, we go again with the clad. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we're back. <laughs> Definitely needed a, a couple of moments to like <clears throat> reset there. Can't believe in the same run we had both of these fights. Nemesis, zero damage, seven turns. Then we get the Calipers, fight Nemesis again, 83 damage over 12 turns. What the heck? What the actual heck happened here? Well, that's that's the variance of Nemesis, I suppose. Pretty nuts that it happened like that, though. Welp, back to the drawing board, I suppose. I'm not sufficiently discouraged from my Ironclad project, though. I think the more we run into obstacles as clad, we, the more we can figure out ways to iron the kinks out of our play. Yeah, with four potions, too. Like, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Our old nemesis. Hmm. Ooh, I like this formation. Hmm. This path up the far left is not bad either. Quite like having Slime Boss as my boss in Act 1. I think it lets you pick cards that are good for the rest of the game pretty well. Do I find that I forget what I'm, what my cards are when I do the same uh, character back to back? Sometimes, yeah, I like lose track of what relic I have, especially if I had a run that died in Act One or Two, and then I restart. Thoughts on Clad Boss Swap generally? Underrated is what I'll call it. Most people are unwilling, and that's including me actually. Most people are unwilling to give up the six health per combat, but I think a good boss swap can easily pay back the health and more. As usual, though, it's a high variance line, and I'm not sure that the clad needs the high variance because of his high baseline. I wonder if it's ever correct to just go five combats as ironclad because of that burning blood. The further you get into an act as ironclad, the better a deck you can build, um, the more you can actually just heal off of each combat. So I I'm... Let's try this, actually. Let's go all combats and see how it plays here in Act 1, or as many combats as we can while still getting the elites that we want. I think mass combats are going to be quite good. We get to look at a lot of cards to help find Clad's combo pieces. And we get the maximum advantage from the Burning Blood by taking the maximum number of combats. So then this is either a transform or a hundred gold. <clears throat> Since I'm going to a shop in Act 1, let's take the hundred gold. Money is pretty powerful. All combat, all wombat. My face, though. Probably defend, defend, strike here? We could do... bash? Seems crazy. If Jawworms buffs again, we have to go more aggro, though. There we go. Guaranteed kill. That wasn't too bad for a Jawworm fight. They can get pretty bad. Very much happy with an early Pommel Strike. Oh yeah, Darkache, I have, I have no intention of abandoning on the 20th win. With any of the four characters. Should we get there? I have put forth the challenge to myself that could well be impossible. Like, 20 defect wins in a row? Nobody's ever done that. Perhaps nobody ever will. But we'll see. I look forward to doing a deep dive on Defect when we get there. My face again. Okay, it's not too much face. We might even come out of this fight with a positive hit point. <laughs> Looks like we will. 
good. Very good. That's right, to get the 20 win streak on Defect, you just have to embrace the law. The Claw Law. Wow, Anger versus Fire Breathing. What a choice in a Slime Boss Act. He said, ignoring Searing Blow. Look at that many rest sites, right? If I could get four, I'd consider it, but I only see three here. My, uh, when do you take Searing Blow? Which actually is not something I get asked very often, but... My criteria for this being an actually good card to build around is, uh, you're in Act 1, and you've got four, or better yet, five campfires ahead of you that can upgrade Searing Blow each time. Here, though, I'm thinking Anger, because we already have a draw card in Pummel Strike. <clears throat> Seems like some excellent damage for Act 1. Really good way to get through Elites as well. Whereas the Fire Breathing mostly only helps against our boss, not our Elites. There are also a few events that can upgrade Searing Blow, and that can also help. But you can't rely on the events, I found. Hit you. Bring it to eight. That's two strikes to kill. And let's full block. I'd like to gain some health in this fight. So my hope is we can do attack, attack, defend, or even attack, attack, defend, defend next turn. The front louse will attack us. Attack, attack, defend, defend it is. Perfect. And then next turn could be a little awkward here, depending on how many blocks we draw. It's not, though, because we don't get attacked. Perfect. That means we can heal the full six. Good fight. Get another potion, a gambler's brew. Wouldn't call it a great potion. And we get both Dark Embrace and Carnage offered to us. What a choice. What a great choice. I think we've already established that Dark Embrace is such a late game powerhouse. It's almost impossible to ignore on Clad. Carnage definitely fits better in the here and now. But we have more card rewards coming up to get attacks for the elite. Our current hypothesis is that we should always be taking the Dark Embrace in this situation. I think that's what I'm going to be doing, is pretty much always pick the first Dark Embrace we see on Clad. How well will that work for, out for the... How well will that work for us remains to be seen. The hope is quite well. This guy would be a lot easier with Carnage, though, just saying. Hopefully turn three is a block turn. It is. In fact, it's a kill turn. Good. Great fight. Get our money back. And I'll happily take another Pummel Strike. Could also take a Hemokinesis for a bit more damage efficiency, but with an Anger in the deck, the more card draw, the better, as uh, far as I see it. Let's do it. Hmm. Three lice. Too many lice. Very little block next turn, so we have to... get ready to kill one of them at least. The back one is the only one that's guaranteed to attack next turn. The front one has the most health, uh, the least health. Pretty much guaranteed three attacks, though. I say let's kill the one, or let's hit the one that's guaranteed to be attacking next turn. And block twice. Now ah, they're all going for it. This one has the highest damage, though, so glad we picked it. Yeah, where's the shuriken from last run? Would it be a lot better here?
And just like that, Carnage returns to us. It even combos with a Dark Embrace, drawing an extra card if we don't play it. That said, Perfected Strike is very hard hitting with two Pommel Strikes added. The base damage of this Perfected Strike would be um, 6 plus 8 times 2, 16, so 22. Does two more damage than Carnage, unupgraded. And I think two more damage than Carnage, upgraded as well. 22 upgrades to 30, I believe. Yeah, 30. So it is more damaging for now than Carnage. Although if we remove strike cards, it'll become less damaging. And it won't draw us a card when it exhausts, like the Carnage will. So I'm not 100% sure I even want it with a slightly higher damage. Yeah, the, the exhaust of Carnage uh, when we don't need it can be an upside. Although it's a bit awkward with a double Pummel Strike, right? Because we'll often Pummel Strike into the Carnage and be unable to play it. Hmm. Also wondering about Gambler's Brew here. Seems good for the knob fight, but I also like this weak potion quite a bit. Maybe I'll go weak potion in Tropic Brew. Or the other option is maybe discard the Gambler's Brew, drink the Entropic Brew, and then figure out what to do. Rosen Sky, thanks for the $21 tip. Frozen Sky says, You got me into Slay the Spire, and thanks to you, I managed to 100% the game. I'm a YouTube watcher and just wanted to give something back for the consistent and enjoyable content. You're heckin' welcome. Thank you for the tip. Frog, ah, Frog? Shrug is definitely a uh, safe pick here, but I think we want more damage. That said, Shrug with the Anger is actually, yeah, not bad. I do want something that hits a bit harder, though. I think with what I'm looking to build here, we're going to go Carnage. Hmm. Like a weak potion in Tropic Brew. I'm not 100% sure on that, though. Hmm. Definitely not the fight for the weak potion, but it is the fight for the Dark Embrace. So that part's good. We just have to kill one sentry quickly and play the Dark Embrace, and then things should be pretty good. Unfortunately, we're doing it without much potion help, though. And that does make things pretty awkward. I'm tempted to throw the weak pod and uh, use the uh, Entropic Brew here. My turn one is likely to be Pummel Strike Carnage. Yeah, I think we need a potion. Hmm. Yeah, we'll use the attack potion. Okay, that simplifies things greatly by allowing us to get a kill turn one. Good. In that case, I can do Perfected Strike, uh, Defend Carnage, take five. I like that. Then this turn we'll have to tank ten, seems reasonable. And then we're fine after that. Probably. Might take one more hit, actually. Ooh. Even worse. Hmm. Maybe we need to focus fire here to try to kill it next turn. The front one. Pummel Strike Perfected Strike would deal... 22 plus 9, 31. So let's bring this below that threshold. 
We're likely to just draw a bunch of dazed here. Oh, look at that! Glad I did the math. Easy. But then we're one short of a kill here, unfortunately. So we do take 10. Ow. But my face, though... Either way, I'm reasonably happy getting through that fight with uh, a lot of health. We've got some great cards, we've got a lot of money, and we have a useless relic. But we also have potentially a Brutality, an Iron Wave, or a Heavy Blade. More card draw with Brutality is interesting. Not often you see this card so early. Having a Brutality can open up a lot of synergies on Ironclad, which I quite like. Makes a couple relics a lot better makes Rupture a lot better. Iron Wave is mediocre, but acceptable here. Let's take the Brutality. I think that's actually a pretty good card. And we do get a Rest Sight momentarily. What is our first upgrade going to be? Carnage, of course. Yes, Carnage. We need that extra damage. And we want it now. It's acceptable here. Yeah, we'll play it. This one will buff next turn, so we can safely just kill the back one, hurt the front one next turn, finish the turn after that. In fact, that means we probably don't need to play the Brutality at all. Save the two hit points. Because it looks like we're clear either way. Yeah. There are some fights where we're really going to want to play the Brutality, but it's worth doing a little bit of analysis to make sure that we actually want to. Headbutt. Very useful card. I could also see taking another Anger here. I like Headbutt for being able to Headbutt Anger. I like Headbutt for being able to Headbutt our best attack card. I like Headbutt for working in the late game to let us find key cards that we either missed the first time or otherwise didn't play. And I like it for its above average damage. I'm really happy with the Headbutt. One of my favorite manipulation cards. Just having one of these in the deck could have easily solved our problem against Nemesis last run. Did we even see any headbutts last run? I feel like we didn't. Don't remember seeing one. But that's all it would have taken, is just being able to headbutt a key attack card on one of the intangible turns, or a key block card on one of the regular turns, and things could have been so much different. Action Rizo with the Prime Sub and the 39 months. A Smiling Mask is back. Found before our first shop is pretty good. It's going to allow a consistent stream of card removes, which could have some theoretical faint synergy with the Darkstone Periapt by allowing us to take curses that we then remove. Doesn't mean it's going to be good, but it could help. We can fight sentries again. We're also about to fight a another elite. I'm willing to do it. In this dead adventure of event, you can search up to three times. Each time gives you some kind of loot, and there's a chance that a monster comes back. The text in the event tells you which monster you're facing, with this one meaning the three sentries, who we do have a great matchup against. The headbutt makes it even better. I want the relic. I want that relic. Can't stop me from getting a relic. We could also get a potion from this fight, which would be very useful. I might have to use the skill potion, though. Heck, I was hoping we draw a strike along with the carnage to kill this one. Looks like a good time for the skill potion, then. What do you got? Offering Shrug Exhum. Offering gets me the kill. 
Shrug might be the most efficient way to get the kill, actually. Drawing one has a... 75% chance to get the kill, actually. I'll take it. No. Fair enough. Oh, well. We have a shrug now. And we only take seven more. It's fine. Note that the burning blood is uh, mostly what's keeping us alive at this point. We've taken so many fights and so much damage. I'm not going to play their brutality, am I? No, I should. I need to draw through all the cards here. This fight shouldn't take too much longer. We're going to headbutt Shrug. I mean, discarding... Hmm. Yeah, we're going to headbutt Shrug. No, the cards go where I want them to. Good. Hmm. Perfection. Can't believe I didn't draw any days there. Wow. Crazy turn. I don't think I can kill this turn. Let's see a way to do 13. We're just shy. We can do 12, but not 13. There were no angers in the draw pile for Pommel Strike to draw, unfortunately. All right, we get the relic. It's an ancient tea set. We don't get a potion, concerningly. We do get a feel no pain if we want it. It is good for the slime boss fight. I'm actually a little worried that this will not help in the next elite fight, though. Um, we might be about to run into disaster here from being too greedy with the combats. Let's see how it goes. I think we have a, a moderate risk of perishing here. Especially against Gremlin Ob. Right. Although if we can headbutt Carnage, we'll be fine. Do I risk it with another Pummel Strike? This could be bad. If we hit Carnage, it's really bad. But it's only a 1 in 13. I guess Bash is pretty bad to hit too. So let's say 2 in 13 of that's bad. Probably just play the Strikes then. Okay, we cannot headbutt Carnage, which means we might be dead here as we take eight this turn, a little bit more next turn. I can't quite survive next turn, nor can I kill. So it looks to me like we're pretty toast here. Dang it. The Enigma Engine, thanks for the 31 months of support. I don't think headbutting anger gets us to the required damage, right? We can do 15 this turn, leaving the Grumman at 45. With three energy, is there any way to do 45 damage? I don't see it, right? Carnage Strike, anger does 40. Nothing gets to 45. And we have no cards that can block for enough. So there's no way for me to mitigate the damage either. Unless maybe Feel No Pain can do it. We'd have to let Carnage exhaust, though. Uh, quick math. If I Feel No Pain, we block 6. Go to 2019. 
Lock six is put to 25. We died of brutality, even in the best case scenario. So no, we can't. Not that we, now that we played brutality, that won't work either. We just have the exact wrong amount of health for this. <laughs> Classic. Okay, that's fine. We'll just go again. But we're just barely dead here. Even to the point that something like uh, taking the Wild Strike over the Feel No Pain might have allowed us to get a couple more floors into this run and maybe win the whole thing, actually. Hmm. Duly noted. Let's go one more time. That was a little bit too greedy, but only very slightly. We were very close to riding the line successfully there. And once again, only failed because of a uh, bottom percentage outcome. Although again, in the art of streaking, we really have to be able to adapt and account for any outcome, even if it is the worst possible outcome, because eventually you will encounter the worst possible outcome over and over again. rude. What point will I start trying with another character? Maybe in a month or two. I could also see running maybe two characters in parallel, one at the beginning and one at the end of stream. But I really would like to at this time just deep dive into one character and actually learn and master that one character. Go with an early transform here. Barricade. Hmm. Barricade with headbutt. All right. Entrench next card. Let's go. Take the flat damage here because of the burning blood. Ah, no elite snipe. Bummer. Do you get a blessing of the forge? Searing blow. Not a thing. Root Reducer says, do I almost always go transform on that one? No, my my general criteria is as follows. Um, if you can beat the Act 1 boss already, remove. If you can't beat the Act 1 boss yet, transform. If you're about to get killed by an elite, upgrade. That's the criteria for me. Wow, these are bad. Um, shoot. Yeah, I guess take Boomerang, get in, in Flame here, or a Strength Potion or something. Fire Potion, that'll help. Carnage, that'll also help. Okay, maybe we didn't need the Boomerang, actually. Panicked a bit, though. Definitely don't want to go for the Burning Elite here. I think that would be a foolhardy endeavor. We're going to go for these two. With sentries being first up. And if only they had a little less health. I could forge pot and fire pot to kill one on turn one, but I think that's overkill. We should use the forge pot or the fire pot in this fight, but not both. I'm thinking forge pot, since we can carnage plus defend plus turn one here. And then headbutt strike would kill. Hopefully. Or three strikes would kill. That's also fine. That's also fine. Jax Tony, and thanks for the five months. Got a three dollar an hour raise. Pretty happy. That's awesome. Congrats to you. Well done. Could lose a lot of health in this fight. Unfortunately. Oh, Carnage is here to save the day. Hey, better than expected. Good. Now 
very good. Just a plate headbutt first here. Didn't actually want the block. Alright, we have 42 health and a toy ornithopter, meaning we heal 5 when we use a potion. And, hmm. What do you think? Do we still take the first Dark Embrace that we see? <laughs> it's hard not to take this offering, though. There's even an, a uh, valid reason to go combust here with Slime Boss at the end, but it's got to be Offering or Dark Embrace, in my opinion. Hey, grats on the first day 20 win with Clad there, Sleeping Dragon. Well done. I think Offering also helps make this uh, barricade a lot better. I like it with Headbutt, too. Actually, given how the previous run just ended, let's phrase it like this. One of these cards is a lot better against Gremlin Knob than the other one is. It's Offering. Offering is good in the now and the late game. Dark Embrace is only good in the late game, although it is arguably better in the late game sometimes. Right now, we want the uh, Offering for sure. Because then we can do something like Carnage Headbutt Offering Carnage to just absolutely destroy something. Sleeping egg, perhaps. Ah, heck. Do we lose the carnage, or... Do we wake up now? I think we have to go now. I think doing this fight without the carnage plus is going to be very hard. Where's your music, sir? Ooh, we can bash and headbutt the Carnage. That's gotta be right. Just take 20 to the face. Then we can Carnage Offering, redraw the Carnage. If we bottom deck the Offering, I'm gonna be very sad. But my sound. Good. Okay, so play Carnage, play Offering. Could also just play Strike, tank 20 more to the face, go to 2 health. Or I could just play Strike Fire Potion and win. Offering might save me the Fire Potion, though. I would prefer to keep it. Nah. Do it this way, then. Bottled Tornado. We have a barricade, right? I should have taken the Dark Embrace? Bean Fire? Definitely should have taken the Dark Embrace. Do I want a bottled barricade? Maybe? <laughs> Not sure about that. It'll be really good if we get to the end game, but it might prevent us from getting to the end game. Let's try it out. I, I like, generally speaking, when I'm in a situation like this, I'd, I'd rather take the thing than not take the thing, because not taking the thing makes me feel like the video game isn't doing it right. Let's take the thing. Take the barricade. Get an ancient tea set or something. Get a paper frog. Enemies that are vulnerable take even more damage. And wander our way into what could be a tricky fight here. Cultist Potion could really help against Slime Boss. So could Fire Potion. I'm eager to use my potions more aggressively because we heal from them, so I'm tempted to just drink the Cultist Potion right now. That's what I'm going to do. Heal five. I'm going to go Boomerang. Headbutt the Sword Boomerang? Why not? Block for five. Carnage would kill you. Boomerang would not kill you. Hmm. 
it's not quite a kill. I'll be Carnage defend then. That's a shame. Off by one here. That's a shame. Lane Barrier I like quite a lot. We're also probably going to want some block cards if we've got a bottled barricade. Don't feel like we need a fire breathing at the moment. I would love to get a Sneko Eye after the first boss here. I'm, I'm not 100% sure we're going to even get to the uh, reward from the first boss, but I'll do my best. Hmm. Probably have to... Uh, Lane Barrier Defend. This could be a tough fight for us, though. Or I can play Fiend Fire Fire Potion. End the fight immediately. I guess with Offering, we might be able to do something next turn. Bash into Carnage we just kill. Or we can do this. Carnage Defend. Or yeah, Carnage Headbot Offering also works. Let's see here. Go to 16. Next turn I won't be able to do 16 with Weekend. We have to kill next turn. So I think we Headbot Offering? I think we Headbot Offering. Get me out of here. Keep the potion. Armaments is okay. Get in here, armaments. More block and a way to upgrade a card can be quite nice. Might need to have a snooze, though, if we want to fight another elite here. Helps fuel the offering. Could think about upgrading offering, upgrading fiend fire, upgrading armaments. These are all pretty juicy upgrades. I wish I had a bit more health to work with. Because once we have both Offering and Fiendfire upgraded, we can just do 100 damage or something sometimes. Makes it really easy to uh, win fights. Let's upgrade Fiendfire. I think we can go forth a little bit more with an upgraded Fiendfire on relatively low health, given the safety net of the Ornithopter here. Uh-oh. Hmm. Well, let's play this to start. Hello. Friends. Can easily kill two of them. I guess with the fire pot I could kill three. That would require using the fire pot though. I don't like that idea. This is definitely not what we wanted to see after uh, taking the upgrade though, that's for sure. Damn it. Carnage you for sure. And we could do Sword Boomerang, Upgrade Strike. That would actually work really well. That would require that the Sword Boomerang land a hit on either of these. That's pretty likely though. It's one in two, three times, so it's a seven out of eight chance that the Sword Boomerang will hit one of these slimes. And then we can upgrade the Strike to kill the other one. I think that's our best option. We could Bash Strike guarantee kill one, then take six. But Boomerang into Armament Strike is the only way to take only one here. But if we fail, what happens? I probably have to use the Fire Potion. All right. 
No prob. And I could even upgrade something other than strike if I wanted to. I don't want to. Take the one. Good fight. Good fight. Infernal Blade, Perfected Strike, Iron Wave. Don't necessarily need any of these things. This will be either Gremlin Ob or Legavulin, is that correct? I think that's correct. Actually, no, we fought sentries first, did we not? Forgotten who this elite can be. Fertile Blade's pretty fun, and when it works, it works really well. I also like that it's got natural synergies with uh, exhaust builds. The powers, Feel No Pain and Dark Embrace. Lego was most recent, so it's either Kremlin Ob or Sentries. 22 health. I think we just established that's not enough health, but if I have an offering plus, probably is enough health. I won't have an offering plus because we don't get to upgrade before the elite fight. I also don't get to rest before the elite fight. So it's a choice of the elite or the fight. Bottled Barricade's really good against Lega. Hope we don't get to fight Lega. Fight can be spooky too, right? This could be a uh, 24 damage on turn one from Slaver and Slime. So it's it's not like we're guaranteed to survive either option. Sentries, I think we can defeat. All right, let's 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 go. I'm, I'm a bit worried about the slime boss afterwards, though, without the help. This is not the greatest knob draw, but hold on. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Did you know Carnage does 49 damage? It's a lot of damage. I'll take a boot thingy. And an impervious. Although I'm wondering if we should be slightly lower health with a fire potion. Food for thought. Impervious with a bottled barricade is insane though. Actually, bottled barricade with the anchor is also insane. I'm gonna upgrade offering. I just get to keep that 10 block. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Just do 40 damage, just do 40 damage. And I lose some of my good cards. Losing the headbutt seems bad. Should headbutt a card. But a block card. Lose Carnage if I play Impervious, huh? Hmm. If I play Carnage, I, what, die? Dying seems like the bad option. Dying definitely seems like the bad option. Hmm. This is where the Fire Potion seems like it might have been nice. Because then I can't play Offering, right? Good luck, Carnage. Hope you have a great life without me. Upgrade the Flame Barrier and headbutt it. That'd be interesting. I feel like we want to upgrade the Bash.
really don't have much damage left is our core problem here. Kind of missing that fire breathing. I think we're just dead. Definitely. Hmm. Can't believe Bottled Barricade didn't work out for us. GG. GG. Alright, I think at this point the only thing I've decided, concluded is that, um... The pilot is the error here. Does the streak have to be wins? That's right. <laughs> Not necessarily. I'm gonna play some Monster Train. Scotty Dog says, hate to hindsight, but I think you had lethal on Knob without the fire potion. Yeah, I think we could have traded a little bit of health to kill the Kremlin Knob without using the fire potion. I don't think we had a kill with without losing any hit points, but uh, I think we could have traded a bit of health, kept the fire pot, and been in a better position for Slime Boss. Was really relying on getting a good split on Slime Boss, and it, it didn't work out with those draws, which uh, caught me off guard. Leave the pain train for the monster train. How did I like Ring of Pain on Saturday? I thought it was... It's a cool take on a roguelite. Uh, I don't... Don't get a lot out of uh, the spooky aesthetic or ambience in any game that does it. Um, so it's not my particular flavor, but it's a, a really unique style game. And it was uh, a lot more challenging at the, the very end than I expected. Got very close to winning a run of Ring of Pain, which I, I heard was a harder feat than I was thinking, maybe. Yes, just a little bit more familiarity with how, how the boss fight, and we would have been able to win in that position. I didn't realize we're going to have endless waves of summons. And I didn't realize the boss was going to be so impressively powerful in one-on-one -on -one combat. Huge step up from the uh, game leading up to it. Have they played They Are Billions? Yeah, that was uh, one of our first community-voted games on the stream. a bit rough around the edges, and uh, just just like with Ring of Pain, I, I, when a game is themed around zombies, that gets me... Uh, it gets exactly zero credit from me for that. So it has no appeal, usually. Is Dark Souls a zombie game? Hell. I guess the player is a zombie, huh? Hmm. Hmm. I'm feeling like a glutton for punishment, so we're going to keep trying to get Awoken slash Umbra, a clan combination that we've been finding is... Really tough to win as here in Monster Train on Covenant 25. Part of getting a fully completed save file for this game means you have to win with all the possible combinations of... Let's try Shade Splitter. Of uh, champion and clan combination. And uh, boy, some of these are really, really stinky. 
We did do Return of the Obra Dinn on stream. Yes, that was a fantastic community voted game. One of my favorites. Very well done game. Very cool. Let's see, we got a wake to start. That makes the explosive variant. And we got double Wildwood Sap. Oh yeah, we're super doing Rejuvenate here. Deal 20 damage to the front enemy units. Although rejuvenating with spikes or regenerating with spikes can be just as good. Hmm. Because your survival is just the same. What is spikes? When a unit with spikes takes damage, the attacker takes damage back. It's that simple. 20 is more than 10. Not if the enemy is a multi-attacker, though. In that case, 10 is more than 20. And that's what I'm thinking about here, is that in some of the fights that most matter, we're not fighting Seraph the Patient, are we? No. Oh, but it's Chase Seraph. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. How do we deal with that guy? Spikes can also damage the whole floor, that's right. Whereas uh, Explosive can only hit one thing at a time. I think I do like Spikes more than Rejuvenate, actually, upon some reflection, but... Uh, already worried about our endgame here. Ooh, and Spell Cards have a chance to not consume. Means we can potentially stack even more regen with the Wildwood Sap. And that is powerful. But damage shield on morsels can also be powerful, allowing us to feed morsels more safely or use them as chump blockers at times. I'm going to try the wing clippings. And I am going to pay 15 shards for another artifact, some of which can be really strong, like the Gnarled Root gives friendly units more attack power per stack of spikes meaning our sentient gets more attack power. I kind of like that. Ball Thamos, thanks for the 35 months. One of the best non-prime numbers. Smooth inside, pointy factors. What more could you ask for? I mean... There's the, the, the whole, like, 12 versus 10 debate, right? You got more factors with 12 than you do with 10. So, what about, what about numbers divisible by 12, huh? is Monster Train like Spire. It's a deck builder like Spire, but there's some really key core differences in that uh, you aren't just one character fighting against monsters. In Monster Train, you can think of it as sort of like Slay the Spire plus Tower Defense, because the goal of this game is to stop hordes of enemies as they enter into your three-layered vertical train and try to reach the last shard of the Pyre of Hell which naturally sits on top of the train. Anyway, the goal is to kill the enemies before they walk past your units and reach that last shard of the pyre, which is represented as our overall health. It doesn't matter if our units that we're deploying die, um, but if the last shard of the pyre dies, then the run is lost. Didn't quite do that right. Have a morsel. Spiky sentient here will be able to do everything and more required to kill everybody. So how combat works is that enemies attack first, starting from the front to the back. So everything, and essentially the things that are closest to the center of the screen get to act first. Oh yeah, I've got no way to kill collectors. Hmm, that's gonna be an issue. Not being able to kill collectors is kind of unfortunate. They're like little treasure goblins that spawn each combat, gain money if we kill them. More power. So again, enemies attack from front to back. So this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then after enemies attack, our units attack from front to back. You can have a buddy. I 
After a certain number of waves, the boss of the battle will spawn. Bosses have the relentless property, meaning that unlike normal enemies, after combat they don't go up to the next floor. Instead, they'll keep fighting until one side has been completely wiped out. So bosses are a big stat check for your units at the end of each combat. Stacking regen here gets us more than strong enough to beat the first boss pretty easily. Look at this sentient. 29 attack power. Pretty insane. They all perish upon hitting those spikes. Do all units... Uh, so morsels are eaten by the frontmost unit on the floor at the end of each turn. Yeah, each morsel gets consumed by the whichever unit is in front. I'm going to stack more regeneration. I don't know if this is correct. But I kind of like where we're headed here. Can add more morsels, more space, or rage and energy gain here. I usually like going a space prism here. I'm a bit worried about our damage options, though. I'd like to get a unit that has Sweep or something. We're going to go Merchant of Steel Umbra unit, I guess. Yeah, we are. More or less have to. All right, let's take a Prism and see what happens. Thorn Hollow would be nice, but I don't see an opportunity to get an Umbra banner or uh, an Awoken banner with this layout. The only one I see is here. It's a bit late. Interesting. We are offered a large stone, which is nice with a space prism. Can make something extra big with big stats. With the options being Morsel Master or Morsel Maker, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Arg, it's Blarg, says, Yesterday I infused a bounty hunter, permanent four on attack on extinguish into Legion of Wax. Duped the Legion and then laughed as you broke math. Oh dear. Rip math. I usually like Morsel Master over Morsel Maker. This can be a decent... Decent unit to just feed Morsels to. As you get two for one value, essentially, right? They'll get plus 12, plus 12 every time I play a Morsel Miner on their floor. Or they can go behind some other unit and dupe the Morsels for that unit. Starts like this are definitely tough. It's been pretty standard for this clan combo. It's just... Every run kind of feels like this. It's weird. It's very weird. Spell chain, huh? Hmm. A spell chain Wildwood Sap. I wish that worked. I don't think it does, though. I wouldn't hate spell chain on making of a morsel, perhaps. Do the dupe morsels take up extra space? Unfortunately, yes, they do. The spell chain effect means that when you play a unit, or uh, when you play this spell, you create a new copy of it in your hand that costs one more. And that one is deleted when you play it. So it's great to add spell chain onto a card and then discount it. Makes us want to go Merchant of Magic next, not Umbra's... Purcell's Horde Umbra banner. Nothing to fuse. Let's see, we could just reroll. Maybe I'll just put Heartstone Shieldstone on the... Morsel Master. Although this can also be a good essence. Let's do that. Let's just give it defensive buffs. And either we get a unit draft or we go another unit banner, I guess. I'm actually not sure we have enough... Um, no, the, the sentient should be enough damage to kill. The next boss here. And we do get a unit draft. That's good. I, 
I'm about 80% certain that the game is under no obligation to give you a unit draft challenge, from what I remember. I'm almost positive I've seen runs without ever being offered one. Probably want to set up on the bottom floor with these reconcilers here. Although we may want to put the Morsel Master on a separate floor. So that we can properly feed morsels. Let's do that. Put the Morsel Master up top. Sentient's job is to kill all the weak enemies as they come in. Morsel Master's job is to eat a lot of morsels. The sentient will perish if I don't heal her, huh? Guess that's what the Morsel Master is for. Although it alone will not be able to do much here. This thing's gonna hit our pyre for so much damage. Oh boy, we are so hosed here. <laughs> Damn it. gonna do so much damage. Alright, play it again. Need that plus 24, plus 24. Okay, the sentient gets to stay alive. This stuff is still a problem, though. This is big yikes. So we do 32 damage to the Pyre. Just the Forge Disciple alone. So I guess that means we want to keep the Sentient alive and beat the boss. Let's try this. Yeah, it's a sweet boss, so Sentient actually has a decent chance here. Although it doesn't look like it's going to work out. Bummer. Bummer! Nah, we didn't get the other sap. Although, it doesn't matter, her initial health was too low. Um, actually, maybe by playing the Train Steward we can change things. One second here. No, that didn't change anything. All right. Well, fair enough. Deal 32 to me, I guess. Oh, I see. Okay, because he didn't die. Ouch. This boss has sweep, unfortunately, so there's no amount of chump blocking you can do. They attack all units at the same time. However, we're still here. So we get to keep playing for a little bit longer. Um, I don't hate Restoration Detonation. It's nice to have a thing that can do damage. Wouldn't a train steward on top floor have killed the blocker? No, the train steward would have been killed immediately on the top floor by the sweep enemy. Enemies attack first, unfortunately. We need ways to kill enemies. Mind Collapse does help with that. Thorned Hollow. Rejuvenate Gain Spikes. Okay, that's something I can actually work with. That's a cool kind of scaling with a deck with this much regeneration. Could also go Shadow Eater plus the Morsel Master for some AoE explosions. That's kind of cool. 
but I rather like the Thorn Hollow. Thorn Hollow's essence just adds a flat amount of spikes. Continues to be a problem against Seraph the Chase, though. This Seraph just kills us. It seems. Don't know how to counter that. Alright, since we got our unit, let's go to the Merchant of Magic here. A double stack Wildwood Sap could be very powerful. Magic Power and Consume could be pretty good on a heal or something, too. Or actually, I like it on Mind Collapse, especially. Let's add that to Mind Collapse. And then minus one cost on the spell chain making of a morsel. Again, Seraph will definitely be doing a multi-floor setup. Probably sentient on one floor, spiked hollow on another floor. But will it be enough? I'm not sure. Guess we're going to find out together. Not enough money to make a reroll worth it. Um, we do have a minus two cost being offered, which could be cool. Could put that on the Wildwood Sap. Since it's reusable, potentially, I kind of like that. Might be too many shards too quickly, but I think we're getting somewhere. I'm not going to fuse units together at the moment. I'm going to try to upgrade that Thorn Hollow separately. Looks like we're going Merchant of Steel then, here. Get the remove to the banner and the thing that we can fuse here if we want to. We'll see. It might perish shortly. Ah, uh, good old honest aggressive or stealthy. I like the one-time gold gain. We need some help right now, so giving me a bonus that will help for this merchant of steel sounds pretty good. Can I fuse Morsel Master and Morsel Maker together? Yes, that is allowed if you've got one of each. You can make a unit that automatically makes four morsels per turn. Definitely creates capacity issues, though. It's a bit weird. Have some spikes. Just gotta be careful of the damage. It's the same either way. Put the big guy on top, right? That's correct. Good resto debt, the thorned hollow. That's kind of cool. pretty cool. Should have played the uh, Shade Splitter first here, though. Could also use Awake instead of Wildwood Sap Restoration Detonation. Separately, they are a bit better, though, yeah? The more times we heal this thing, the more spikes it gains. It's working. Just weakening this big guy is fine. May want to consider some heals on the sentient down below now. Or even just a chump blocker. Two morsel miners is great. Stat gain. Here, you have a little bit of a heal. Stick around. Perfect turn to gain 120 gold, as far as I see. Stack some regen. 
Yeah, give me 120 gold right now. I'm gonna want that for the next ring. These two might be a bit of an issue. Not with Mind Collapse helping out, they're not. Beautiful. It's 30. So if I put a train steward behind you, we get there. These will also work. Attack, my friends! And lifesteal is a heal, so it gains spikes when it lifesteals. Excellent. Look at those stats. What a beefy unit. Apply Trample could be a nice way to get this uh, spike unit to not have problems with too many enemies. Shroud Mitosis can create copies of an existing morsel. That's pretty powerful, too. Wouldn't take Cycle of Life, but either Umberstone or Shroud Mitosis are great. We should probably take uh, the Trample. Well, well, well. Shadow Siege. Interesting. Plus 60, plus 50, and plus 2 capacity. We could fuse Shadow Siege into the Thorned Hollow to create the Thorned Colossus with enormous stats, and that would benefit massively from the trample. Wouldn't be able to feed it morsels anymore. Instead, we'd be feeding morsels probably to our sentient on the bottom floor. I don't really see a problem with that. Although we're, we're missing out on some of the damage that way. Oh, well. Yoink. Let's see, when do we get to fuse? We have to wait a while. Well, we have to wait one ring. I guess that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Yeah, get in here. And we need what? Card draw, capacity. Capacity would be good to feed more morsels, but having more card draw initially is very powerful. Especially given that we have to carry the Shadow Siege around for the first fight. Take card draw. King of consistency is card draw. For sure. Show me multi-strike. Large stone. No, that's too big. We don't want to make it six capacity. Then it won't even fit in the top floor. We have to reroll that. Um, let's check this, though. Steel Singer is also here. Oh, hold on. Instead of merging Shadow Siege, we could merge Steel Singer. We get... Less stats, we get uh, 20 40 instead of 60 50. But we get plus one attack power on Rejuvenate, something we're already trying to do to the Spiked Hollow, or the Thorned Hollow. Or we could even combine with Awoken Hollow, so it gets plus two plus two on Rejuvenate. I think we'd rather take Awoken Hollow than Steel Singer, actually, looking at it here.
But then we're not quite as strong immediately. And I have to get rid of this Shadow Siege, too. And we're down 10 gold. The plus one on Infusion is not permanent. Note. Cultivate could also end up going to Morsels if we're feeding any. Yeah, good reasons not to do that. You're right, Twishad. Do give me Spikes 20. And... Refracting Lenses looks good. Really good, actually. When a card with Consume is played, heal 5 Pyre Health. Whether or not it's uh, retained by the Wing Clipping. So we'll heal a ton of Pyre Health, which means we can allow a few units through. Ugh. Oh no. God damn it. Alright. Um, no upgrades for the Hollow for now. I mean, no upgrades. I'm not taking any of these. Bummer. I guess we'd better at least remove a card then, huh? Let's remove one more steward. Really worried now. I mean, we only have three artifacts. That's... Baylor bot, go home, you're drunk. Can I handle this? We're trying to chip things down across multiple floors. I don't think I can handle that. Negative one? What? What? Yeah, get him, sentient. Hmm. We can use the um, uh, mine collapse to kill the collector here. Get some money. Just can't let this guy do too much damage. So you're telling me I can play Awake, then Mind Collapse, then Umbra Stone. I like that. Tempting to um, Resto Debt Sentient here, although this guy is the actual problem. But also Mind Collapse on this guy, which might not be a terrible idea, but then I don't get the energy back. And it gets, it's okay if this guy gets to the pyre and does some damage, although it looks like he might do too much damage. Okay, he'll only hit the pyre one time, because we're constantly healing with the wing clippings. So I'm not too concerned here. bad. Need more spikes and I need them now. Although Trample's gonna do good work here. This is working. With that attack power. Easy.
23 regen. Get them all. This is working. This is definitely working. And then in Relentless Fights, the regeneration on our uh, Hollow will be excellent. Because it's going to allow them to keep stacking spikes and attack power each combat rounds. Not that they need the help. Spiky. GG. Okay, I'm starting to believe in this run. I'm starting to feel like we might actually have what it takes to prevail. I like the ensnare quite a bit. You can root one target, which can help separate difficult enemies. Or keep another enemy trapped with spikes for a turn. I like that a bit more than the invigorating solution, I think. Ooh, ember cash with wing clippings is amazing because those excavated embers can stick around multiple times. Give me that. And we're going to the Merchant of Magic. Okay, here's where things start to really turn around because here's where we get to infuse the hollow with our Shadow Siege. So we make this super hollow. 75, 65 base stats, 5 capacity base stats. Probably going to need a capacity upgrade. Um, and I can make another super zero cost Wildwood Sap, which is kind of cool. Labana with 23 months of support. Thank you, thank you. Feels like we don't need morsels other than the morsel miners for the most part. Need the event that shrinks something. That would be really helpful. Concealed caverns. Do you have that? Uh, we get to build a card, though. This could increase our capacity. Let's have another thing that applies regen. And we want it to heal or buff. Regen plus heal is like a super restore. Buff adds more damage, though, which is what the heal kind of does, too. Give me the buff. And pull a Cinder Descend, leave it be. Regen 4. 10 attack power. Good enough, but not great. I was hoping for the effect that increases capacity is the third effect, but we did not find it. I will make another double stack Wildwood Sap, I want to say. This seemed pretty good. Let's just make you free. The game will let you make a card in that event that does literally nothing. That's kind of cool, actually. Just the swag card. I'm trying to figure out if I take another two-cost reduction here. I guess I will. Make another one of these cards. That puts us to 100 shards, which is a bit concerning. But only a little bit. Winky face. Oh, this is good. The Mark of Invasion is effectively free. And the Stealth Boss is not going to be hard either. 
big. Big. Oh my lord, he's huge. What an enormous creation. Spikes for breakfast. This collector will get away from us, huh? I accept it. More energy next turn sounds good. This first regen on the sentient here. Keep her alive for a bit longer. There's our trample stone. All of this? No, well, not necessarily. To choose Wildwood Sap or Making of a Morsel. I guess we'll go with the Sap. Although Making of a Morsel is a bit more immediate power. It's fine. Again, it's fine when things slip through, since we're healing Pyre Health pretty constantly here. As long as they don't do too much damage. Sentient barely hanging in here. In fact, she'll perish this round, but we no longer need her. And you can be ensnared so that I don't have to put up with your garbage. So you just kill him immediately, huh? Not quite. Not quite. Welcome to the top floor. Have some friends, Mr. Uh, Morsel Master Man. Surely you'll appreciate them. Each point of stealth on the boss is one turn where that boss can't be attacked in combat. Our muscle friend here is able to burn quite a few turns of stealth. Meaning our guy gets to attack almost immediately. And pretty decisively we have... 33 regen, make it 36 regen, make it 42 regen, meaning we heal 42 at the end of each combat round. It's a lot of regen. GG. The grading solution can add more card draw to the situation. I do like that. And it's yet another consume card, so sure. Another way to get more capacity could be useful. Rather like that, actually. And maybe we can finally 
properly upgrade our um, our big guy? I'm hoping. Multi strike. Here we go. Twice the attack power with trample is huge. Just huge. Can add a strength stone if I want, or we can reroll looking for quick. Would not take a large stone or endless. I think I'll just add 10 attack power. Makes a much better unit. This should scale well enough into the late game that we might be able to get something done. I like it. And I don't have to pay for rerolls, too. That's good. We can just purge all of the mediocrity in the deck here. Shade Splitters can go now. And I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm still worried about how we beat Seraph the Chaste, though. Who will be able to remove spikes and regeneration from our Thorned Hollow. That is concerning. Although, I can think of some ways, actually. As long as their attack power is fine. Arcus here is playing a twisted game of Simon Says with us, preventing us from taking a specific action on specific floors, as indicated by the Dark Shard summons. You can have five regen, you can take this. No dying allowed. Such a good tune. Spells. All right, you get to heal then. That's fine, though. Oh no, my morsel! How dare you! Dare you. He's so big.
doll. Forty-nine regen. It's a lot of regen. Gives our big boy a lot of combat rounds with uh, the boss here. More than enough, certainly. Way more than. Basically, completely outheal the boss. Pretty cool, actually. GG. I think we're taking capacity next. Furnace tap is interesting. We can add more multi-strike to one of our units in exchange for four turns of Ember Drain. A pretty powerful downside. But a lot of our good cards are free, as long as we've already played the Umbra Stone. Furnace tap seems excellent. And it would be a great card to add the Permafrost upgrade to, so that we can retain it until we're ready to use it. Also going to take plus capacity on each floor, so we're able to hold more units. I want to be able to play the Morsel Master and the Thorned Hollow on the same floor. That's the current plan. That's right, and Furnace Tap might not consume either. That's true. Very powerful. Make it intrinsic, we can make it minus two cost. Can remove consume from it. Hmm. You. When you summon the second unit during a turn, gain three ember. Excellent with morsels. And we can use that to overcome ember drain, too. I'll just take that. Yes, my, making it cheap and intrinsic would be pretty bad here, I think. Don't do that. I don't think making it replayable is all that good either. I guess I have more reason for Shade Splitter now, huh? Keep one of them. You should be free. There's permafrost. Okay, sweet. I think we might actually have it here. Something akin to a winning run. With this clan combination. Looks good, in fact. Five spikes, no problem. Our big guy won't even care. Big. And then Sentient should be on the bottom to kill these curse-adding enemies before they can actually become an issue. Spikes stare down. Spectacular. Mm 
You're doing fine. Just like that the sentience is able to soften up enemy waves to the point where they're a lot easier for the Thorned Hollow to kill up top. Well, heck no. So what do you think you're doing? Interesting. Okay, ensnare this guy. It's definitely time to use the furnace tab. Oh, that's right, doubling a morsel immediately gives us the bonus, so we only need to play one doubled morsel to get uh, plus energy here. It's pretty good. have a lot less energy per turn, but our hollow is attacking for way more here. Chewing through these enemies. Good. To the face. All the regen. Easily, we could even, oh man, do times four. 186 times four. With 52 regen. Now that's power. GG. Somebody was just saying, got a hope for Bramble Lash. Here's Bramble Lash. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to 10 times the amount of spikes on friendly units. Guess I will take that. Another ensnare actually also really helps against the mini bosses. In fact, maybe this is better. Whoa, Black Betty, Bramble Lash. No, I, I actually do think ensnare will work better on the mini bosses here, letting us just trap them for a bit longer. Could even add a uh, holdover on ensnare, perhaps. Second furnace tap. I don't think so. Engine upgrade could be funny. I don't think so. Just want to keep the deck nice and refined at this point. Is anything strong enough to be worth duplicating? Not really. I mean, I could do another Wildwood Sap, but I think I'd rather just keep her moving. Hadn't considered that, Zizzy. With with the plus attack from Spikes, Adaptive Mutation becomes... Uh, interesting. Becomes a stat gainer. Ooh. This lets us set up uh, middle against Last Divinity with the Thorned Hollow. That's actually kind of huge. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, that's kind of huge. I'll pay for the reroll too. These are all whatever. There's the holdover. Okay, so we can do holdover and snare. And that makes it so that we can't uh, can't ever face problems against the mini-bosses. In fact, with a holdover and snare specifically, you can just completely ignore one of the mini-bosses. Because you can trap them on the bottom floor and they get killed when Relentless happens. Pretty OP. I think I want this Umber Stone to be zero cost, just in case I'm forced into playing the Trample Stone early. Seems important. I'll pay for one more remove. Let's remove three cards here. Shade Splitter. And... Maybe Awake. Although I like the immediate 30 heal. Let's lose a basic restore. I'm not sure I need Crucible Extension anymore. Let's lose this. Okay, to Seraph. I think we might actually finally have it. This clan combination has definitely proven elusive. And we still have to contend with Seraph here, who can be a real issue for us. To that end, we might actually want to play our three different units on three different floors. Go sentient on the bottom to soften things up. Morsel Master in the middle, just to... absorb attention from Seraph. The other option is that we use Morsel Master to scale our, our uh, hollow better and just use this hollow scaling to beat stuff. Let's do that. Let's do that. Just kill you. Good to purge there. Wow, Resto Dent just straight up kills this enemy. That's awesome news. Sentient actually handling the bottom floor here perfectly for us. Um, and then we want to ensnare maybe this guy, buy us a turn. Yeah, buy me a turn here. It looks like we're already getting him. Seraph loses spikes, goes to the middle. Trample can't be removed, so we apply that immediately. Didn't find our plus capacity yet. That's okay. Do it next turn. Sentient still holding on here, although just barely. I want to ensnare. Nor am I ready to furnace tap. Actually, yes, I am ready to furnace tap. I lied. And again, that multi strike cannot be removed by Seraph. We can ensnare Seraph, we just redraw the ensnare card again. Not completely down for that. Hell's Banners give us energy to play. There we go. We 
You can stick around, sentient. Might not get to play any cards on this turn. But I'm not afraid. Get our furnace tap back, which is excellent. You. Heck it. More attack power. That's what I want, right? Yeah. Preserved again. And then very soon, Seraph is going to enter the train and we'll stop removing our uh, buffs. Guess it doesn't matter if I have times five attack power, huh? No, it does not. Keep ensnaring the biggest of the angels here. Ten Ember Drain, by the way. It's fine. I'll just make my own energy. See you later, Seraph. Time six. And then we just ensnare both of these nerds and watch what happens to them. Rip. Might as well ensnare you too. And Seraph does more damage than we're ready for, but that's okay. I mean, we do 1200 damage per cycle, right? We should win pretty easily here. Oh, yeah. In fact, we can do time. <laughs> Look at how many times the freaking wing clippings worked here. We get to time seven off of one furnace tap? What the hell? That's ludicrous. That's ludicrous. GG. What a monster. We have Eternal Stone at home. <laughs> that said, that was kind of close. Definitely Purge Seraph was the version that had the best chance of defeating this deck. But now that we're on to the last divinity with exactly 100 pack shards, I feel pretty good about this matchup here. And we do get both Thorned Hollow and Morsel Master turn one, as well as the Holdover and Snare on turn one. That's great news. I am going to put Sentient on the bottom. Sentient's job is to soften things up. Thorned Hollow is going to scale in the middle and damage the 
last divinity a lot, as well as scale off of morsels that we get. Last divinity is the essentially corrupt heart equivalent of monster drain. That's correct. That is correct. All right, you're going to stick around, buddy. We might lose our sentient pretty quick. It's certainly a risk here. Good, that got preserved. We definitely get this. Is this more energy? Probably want to play awake on sentient here, keep her around. Uh, Resto Debt's good too. Though that doesn't do any damage because the spell shield. This gets played. Let's so kill one of you guys. Definitely play awake down here. Or maybe no, just play the resto dead down here. Play awake here. Get more regen. Do it that way. Put this here. Doing okay, we could restore to keep you alive even longer. I'll do that. And then we're gonna trap the healer? No. The armor guy? Let's hit the divinity this time. This wave can be trouble. Here's Furnace Tap and Trample. Trample's the important one. Really, that didn't change things? Oh, I see you have a lot of health. So probably the Ensnare on you. Are we brave enough to Furnace Tap? Kind of yes. Holy crap, you're dying. Bummer. Hmm. Sounds like then we do want to embrace the Furnace Tap. This is a ton of damage. Alright. Just embrace it. Wasn't preserved, so we're only going to get times three attacking here. Near you. All right, here's our first mini boss. Who we never actually need to deal with if we don't want to. That's going to be the plan, is don't even bother trying to deal with the mini-boss. Just stack root on them. Kill that back immediately with our consume cards, like the excavated embers, for example.
I pumped that whole wave. That's good. Eat a whole bunch of morsels. We serve. And then... Root you. Twice. Let's keep doing that. Here's the second mini boss. What do you do? I think we let one of them through. This does 500 damage, so let's just let the High Priest of the Light get through. He's fine. I've never actually seen both mini bosses on the same way before. It's pretty uh, hilarious. Conceptually speaking. all has to go here. Which means we're gonna not quite do enough damage. It's fine though. Again, we're back to full health already. Keep entangling you. Devastating. Fought an Armageddon, you know. Good for you, buddy. You can go to the pyre, that's fine. Okay, we don't need to root you anymore. Let's ensnare you also. You've got sweep, so the morsels will die anyway. Whatever. That's a lot of enemies. You still rooted? I can't even see anymore. I think you are. Not 100% sure on that, though. Yes, rooted two. Okay. This is not the end, except for the part where it is, because this thing's beaten the divinity. GG, we're free. Never again will we have to do this particular clan combination. I'll take it. Nice spikes. Excellent. GG. And all it took was a Shadow Siege infusion. Plus a Trample Stone, plus getting Multi-Strike when we, when we needed it. I'll take it. I will take it. Pretty low score run, we had zero dollars left over. But now, we've got our border for uh, the sentient. There are only two crowns left. Do I see that right? Soul Guard and Echo Right. So next up is going to be Stygian Guard slash Hellhorns. No, not so. Uh, Tethys. Got to do Tethys here. So Tethys plus Hellhorn. That's actually a pretty cool combination. I think the remaining combos will be fun to do. I 
let's try it here. Tethys is a very low base health champ, but um, can discount damage spells, which I like with the torches, for example. And there's some other fun spells you can get in Hellhorn that are pretty good. Double Hidden Passage here is interesting. One of the ideas that immediately springs to mind is getting a whole bunch of Encant Synergy units and stacking them all on the same floor. We've even got Stygian Banner Unit Merchant of Steel to help get that started. Oh yeah, I think this is going to be excellent. Excellent. Give me Double Encant on floor one, if you love me. I'll take the Conduit version of the Champion. That means damage spells cost less on their floor. Guess what? Basically, all of our deck is damage spells at the moment. So that's a huge savings. And I think I'll take 40 Pyre Health. Two attack power on Slay can be interesting, but we're going to get a lot of kills with the spells. So I don't expect that to be very good. By Grabthar's Hammer. What a savings. Put Tethys on top, I guess. Deal 25 damage to the front enemy unit, discard a card at random. Titan's Tooth says, if discarded before the end of your turn, it will instead be played. So go boop, and then the combo hits them both. Effortless. That's fine. Boss could be a challenge. Gonna need to hit the boss with some 25 damage spells. Which means this enemy is gonna hit the pyre for a bit. That's fine, we have the precious plating. Although, actually, no, we can kill them. Should do that. actually. Uh, but I can deploy a steward and ascend it, so we have another battle unit in the rank here. Probably better than playing two torches. But then, yeah, we actually don't do very much damage, so the pyre has to finish it. One of the weaknesses of Tethys is that you're kind of terrible at the first fight. Take 20 pyre damage. That's not good, but not terrible. Exactly half health. You know what? That's fine. Mollusk Mage is absolutely one of my favorites for any spell power based deck. Add 10 magic power on this floor, meaning all of our spells do 10 more damage or ones with the attuned keyword deal 50 more damage. Another way to ascend units. I like the days as well. I'm gonna grab this tiresome climb. And we said we're going to a Stygian banner. We're looking for units that have the keyword encant so that every time we play a spell on their floor, they deal more damage. Perfect. Siren of the Sea or Nameless Siren are both encant units. I think I prefer the Siren of the Sea because it's both health and damage scaling, whereas the Nameless Siren gets only damage scaling. I want the health. So then we can maybe infuse Mollusk Mage into Siren of the Sea and start duplicating that at the first available opportunity. We even get Unstable Vortex Hellvent together. What a blessing. Looks like a great start to a run. And then, based on our limited money, probably just give them the Battle Stone, another plus 5, plus 10, so they don't die so quick. Oh. 
How do I decide whether or not to upgrade support units? Usually depends on whether the support unit attempts to do things passively or whether they're doing something when they come into play. Like imps, for example, are a priority for endless, as are the tomb units of the Remnant Clan, because giving them the endless upgrade allows you to benefit from them multiple times, which it doesn't do for something like Mollusk Mage. You just get the same bonus, so that you can keep it longer if you make them endless. You're not really benefiting from that in the same way that you are from reactivating the imp effect. What would be the best monster to use is infuse if you could infuse multiple times. The alloyed construct gets better and better the more times you infuse it into itself. As it gets more fuel per fuel and more multi-strike each time. Kind of cool. Yes. I want more things that say in can't. I think we'll go top floor again. We don't have to, but I'm going to. Here, just have some bonuses. Send it applied two days. You got it. Have fun. Up there, kid. Have a blocker. Wow, it took you forever to show up, Mr. Mollusk Mage. But I accept. Uh, this should be fine, right? Totally fine. GG. Second Mollusk Mage, or a Crypt Builder, which benefits massively from having a lot of spell power. Really like the second Mollusk Mage, though. Really like it. We can do Mollusk Mage into Mollusk Mage, or we can fuse something else. Oh my, Apex Imp. When given armor, gains rage equal to gained armor. That'd be really cool with the encant armor stones. There's a couple ways to abuse that, like, tremendously with this clan combination. But I don't see any of them yet. That said, I'm nearly... willing to say heck it. You know what? I am willing to say heck it. We can get two more Stygian banners, too. I want you. There's a, there's a couple ways to, like, break this unit with this particular clan combination. Like, really break it. So I, I'm, I'm going to take it on the off chance that we actually get the really broken combination going. Exciting. The essence of the Apex Imp is just 10 armor, 10 rage. Not amazing. Let's 
Spell chain intrinsic. Interesting. There it is. Freaking there it is. Oh my goodness. Yes. Let's get in here. So, and this is why we took it too. So now we can give Encant Armor 2 to the Apex Imp. And it becomes Encant Armor 2 Rage 2. And that's very cool. Ah. <laughs> ah. I want to put spell chain on anything? Not really. And we have three upgrade slots on that bad boy, which is pretty insane. Means we're probably going Merchant of Steel rather than this way, like I thought we were going to. We also get either the Trap Shoot or the Steel Pulley Claw. Ascend an enemy to the Pyre Room and daze it for three, or descend it to the bottom and daze it for two. I'll take the Descend version, since it's cheaper. We don't have the energy at the moment. If you spell chain an offering, do you get a copy on discarding it? If you, yeah, if you discard a card that has the offering keyword and spell chain, you will get a spell chain copy added to your hand, yes. All right, let's see how the first boss fight goes. I think we'll be pretty good. Tethys and the two special units on the same floor here. This is push to back Telos, which can be annoying. So either I take the Ember Drain or we let the Train Steward get KO'd here. I'll just daze Seraph for uh, Telos. In particular. And note that uh, two damage spells are worth it to play on either of our units here. Takes two damage, but then he gains two armor and therefore two rage. The Siren gets plus two, plus two. It's just a net gain. Seems good. the Mullus Mages, although they can't really be played at the moment. Yeah, they're just gonna die, unfortunately. That's fine for this fight. I actually want to play the Titan's Gratitude down here. So might as well do the boosted damage, hey? To the top floor, huh? Tough. Very tough. Get all of them at least. So it's kind of cool. Why not the Imp in front to tank with armor? Both the Imp and the Siren gain two toughness per spell I play, so either one is just as good as at the other as tanking. They're both perfectly cromulent tankers. Is the answer.
to the bottom with you. Shino, to the top with you. To the bottom with this guy. Going down. GG. The only thing that is important here is that we don't play Tiresome Climb on Telos, is that we'll actually just put Telos in the Pyre Room, killing all of our units instantly. And that would be very bad. Err. GG. Zero cost, deal damage, and apply rage, or maybe gifts for a guard. Draw spells, add consume, and more magic power to them. If you're trying to spam encant effects, this is one of my favorite cards, as you play a spell and then draw three zero cost spells. I like it. None of these are encant effects, so I don't think I care for them. I think we'll skip these. Nope, nope, and nope. But card draw is a yup. Definitely want more card draw here. More cards in hand means we can play more spells each turn. The Cold Kaylee Infusion does not give sweep. No, it just adds Frostbite to attack. Sometimes Fell's Remorse, the, the red, can be quite good. Here's Encant Armor for the Apex Imp, by the way. So now it's four armor, four rage per spell. You can have some health, friend. Don't care about Endless. Or Large Stone. These are really bad upgrades. I guess I can put 10 more attack power on the Siren of the Sea. Neutral Chaotic, thanks for the gifted sub to the Absolute Zero. Thank you, thank you. Probably going to put Mollusk Mage into Siren of the Sea. I think that's going to happen here at the next temple, which is right here. Unless... Oh. Hello there, Unmastered card. In can't draw one more... Uh, draw one and lose five health, huh? Interesting. Offering monuments pretty cool, and we're definitely going to take it here. It's not what I expected. But yeah, card draw is excellent. And yes, Endless Offering Monument is a thing, but it's not really a thing. Large Stone Offering Monument is a thing, giving it uh, 40 more health. Although then it's two capacity, that's still fine. Yeah, minus five to the monument. That's that's right. So it loses health and you draw a card. You can also just tank with that many hit points. I guess we'll go minus two cost. We could add sweep and spell weakness to Tethys here. It's going to go minus two cost. Make a super nuke. Make two separate nukes here. You're going to get 75 plus piercing. Let's put piercing on the Titan's Tooth. 
don't think that matters so much, though. Can you go infinite with offering monument? Yes, it's possible. Difficult, but possible. You've got to do some tricky stuff to go infinite. Spell shield. Hmm. Seems bad. Though I do want that 150 gold. Quite a bit. Seems really, really risky, though. Bummer. Okay, let's not. We're uh, very dependent on our spells at the moment. It could go badly for us, although it doesn't have to, mind you. Set this on the bottom here as a draw engine. Meh. Top floor it is. attack power? Oh yeah, because I have large stone. So that means you'll actually kill the collector for me? Amazing. Good work. I'm allowed to draw one as well. Not work out. Stinky Curse. Would you like to eat 225 damage to your face, sir? And by 225, I meant 275, of course. I'd have to take that damage, though. even dumber. Easy every time. it again? I don't think so. Doesn't feel like we need to. This should definitely get played on the bottom. Hit that boss hard. Oh my. Welcome to die. GG. Obliterated. And there's the other piece of the puzzle that I was hoping we'd see. Guardian Stone says, in can't 
apply armor one to all friendly units, including, of course, the imp. Hey there, blue thingies. Slice and Dice is not available on Steam. It's available through itch.io. You can get a link to it there in chat. Inferno? Battering Ram is cute, but the restriction of front enemy target is a bit bad. Although it's a damage spell, so it's discounted by Tethys. Normally the problem with Battering Ram is it's too expensive. You know what? Take it. It's Ram. Install more Ram. And I'm going to go Merchant of Steel again, because our Imp is not upgraded enough. No removes feels bad, but we'll get removes here. Multi-strike is perfect. Might be duping our Imp soon. Probably do multi-strike reroll. Can also add intrinsic and minus two cost. Minus two cost on gifts for a guard is a, a bit of a must. Look at here first, though. Why don't I help you ruffle those bastards' feathers? Ah, uh, should have upgraded Apex Imp first. Oh well, we can upgrade the Siren of the Sea with uh, the Sunderstone Strike. Apply melee weakness. Now you have four upgrades, lady. See you in another life. So we want to sack Guardian Stone to this Mala's Mage? Yeah, we do. Or maybe to the Offering Monument. I think that's on its own floor. We're at 115 shards. I find spell builds like to go high on the shard count. They don't give a heck. Not one single heck will be given. Endless, huh? All right, you just take 10 attack power. It's fine. Actually, no, you have 20 health. Make sure you don't die to any nonsense. And then next floor, we can purge some cards, finally. All we have to do is deal with the self-made harpy. Surely that's not a problem. Enjoy dismantling your train. Please don't. Could also do something fun like Tethys Siren offering monument on the bottom, but then Sweeper kills us, yeah? Seems awk. gonna go in front. Perfect. 84 plus 20 damage. 
Even better. 325 damage. These are all free, so I can actually use that to nuke you if I want to. Let's nuke him with the battering ram. Get obliterated, friends. Should have done that earlier, actually. So now everybody gets one armor and the imp gets one more rage per spell I play. Oh, nice. Double KO. The stats. The stats. Apex him, 256 times 2 is their attack power. Here, why don't you come up here with 4 days. GG. Bonk! Holy crap, the damage. <laughs> I guess I didn't need 4 days, huh? Dang. And here's Ice Storm to capitalize on our spell power. Deal 1 damage to a random enemy unit 5 times. What if it was actually, like, 50 damage five times? These I probably don't need. And that was just in time before the Merchant of Magic, too. Let's have a look-see here. Check the caverns first. 20 magic power consume is pretty okay on Ice Storm. Not gonna use the Eternal Stone. Let's see what this is first. Branding Rite is both a damage spell for the discount and an armor spell for the rage. That's true. Unfortunately, it is a piercing damage spell and it benefits from spell power. So on, a, on our top floor, it's something like piercing deal 25 damage, apply 20 armor, which is questionable in utility. My beloved pet noodles, the Bone Dog. Can grab the Bone Dog, who heals us five when ending turn in our hand. Or we can just purge a card, which seems better. We're behind on purges. So why don't you have a train steward, my friend? Pet the dog, Stewie. That's your job now. And then we'll get rid of all the other Stewies also at this time. Last. Stop. And I'll take the refracting lenses again, I guess, so that we're at full health anyway. That seems fine. I don't think I want holdover gifts for a guard. That's too strong to delete your own deck. Holdover Hidden Passage or Holdover Tiresome Climb both look pretty good. You can also do Holdover on one of the big damage spells. Holdover Ice Storm. 
is really basic, but really effective. Let's do that. And then ideally we're adding piercing onto the ice storm. But yeah, I could definitely see Holdover Hidden Passage being pretty good here. All right, we had just enough money to get all the stuff there. That's good. Let's show Arcus what we can do with 130 shards and some powerful damage spells. So Arcus has three spell shield and eight stealth. Rude. Very rude. You're gonna daze all of my creatures. It's our highest shard count. We had, um, on the War is Hell Expert Challenge when we did it most recently, we got to over 350 shards, and that was quite a time. That was quite a time. Beautiful. All right, now we can ascend Mullus Mage. Sort of. This is fine. Sense here. That's good. Twenty one damage to a random enemy unit five times. And then each time we play a card, we draw a card off the offering monument. So we get to do some really hot nonsense here, as you can see. Four twenty blaze it. And that's the power of Offering Totem. Super dead. Eight hundred and sixty eight damage. A hundred rage on the apex. Imp. 
Excellent. GG. 776 damage from one attack. Donks that fool. Ancient Synergy is pretty good with this sort of deck. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to twice the number of spells in your deck three times. Currently 42 damage three times, which gets boosted by spell power and discounted by Artethis. Super taking more card draw. Card draw is the best ever. And we go to... I don't have enough money for Trinket Merchant. Never mind. We go to the Merchant of Steel here. There's no upgrades, though, right? I can make the Offering Monument gain in Cant Armor 2. <laughs> that doesn't actually help it. Oh, there it is! I was wondering. Okay. We broke the game. Congratulations. Railhammer. Four additional stacks of armor each time it is applied to friendly units. That means that... The armor totem is not one armor to everybody, it's five armor to everybody. The Apex Imp gains six armor two times and gains rage equal to that armor still. So this is also way more rage on the Apex Imp. Game broken. Now we can dupe the Apex Imp. I guess that does make this decent. Pay for a reroll too. I want more health. 25 more health on this thing. Yeah, where's our founding seal now? If we're lucky we'll get that at the very end for extra nonsense. We get the piercing I wanted on the uh, holdover ice storm. And let's add minus two cost to tiresome climb. 150 shards don't scare me. This is dumb. <laughs> this is great, but this is dumb. This goes to 21 armor from playing one spell. Pro tip. Don't cry. Down with you. All right, now everybody gets armor whenever I play a spell. Five armor to the whole floor. Let's go. Tons of enemies, huh? But what about this? Four hundred and four times two. Eight hundred and eight damage. Ludicrous. A thousand damage.
Enemy not found. Three thousand damage. <laughs> Seems good. Seems good. All right, we have uh, a thousand times two on the imp now. Wait, I'm not done. Is a lot of armor. <laughs> Come on. No, my battering ram. Dang it. Wanted to one shot the boss with it. GG. Oh, it got consumed. Never mind. Well then. I don't even have room for that. I can fuse it with Offering Monument, I guess. Do we have a... No, I don't have a temple. Seems kind of like an annoyance. You know what? Heck it. And another Battering Ram. Let's go. I don't think I've ever had double battering ram in this game. Do we dare do triple? No, I think we remove some cards here. Merchant of Magic. You definitely want double encant. That would be very ridiculous in the good way. Chance for spell weakness is fun. Guaranteed spell weakness 2 on the top floor seems extra busted, but also extra unnecessary. I'm just gonna reroll. There it is! Encant abilities trigger an extra time. And sketches of salvation? Hold on. Sketches seems unironically really good. fast. <laughs> I could take the money here just for the shard count mainly. I don't think I care. Let's fight Seraph with our absurdly powerful deck of cards. We start with all of our encanters on the middle floor and pretty much immediately here. And then we can ascend Tethys to get the free spells, which is what we were going to want here. Oh yeah, we also draw two now. That's right. Seems pretty good. B 
1,500 damage to Syrup. Oh my... <laughs> Bonk. Um... <laughs> Victory! <laughs> it's not the first time I've done that, but that is fun every time. And we get the blank pages. At the start of turn, if we do not have a champion in our hand, add a random one to your hands. Let's go. Let's go. Easy every time. Here we go. Pretty good, though. <laughs> A bonk again. GG. GG. It's actually more turns to the Seraph fight than there are to the Divinity fight, but once again we get the turn one KO. Not even a chance to attack. Get body slammed. It's like the Monster Train equivalent of having Dark Embrace Corruption body slam and just killing everything turn one with your whole deck. Give him hell. So much for blank pages, by the way. GG. <laughs> Sunny, thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome, one and all, to the Cozy Sub Club. I'm definitely marking this one. What the heck? <laughs> GG. <laughs> GG. We got Offering Monument done as well, which is excellent. I think that might have been the last Stygian card. And that was a 75,000 point run, which is ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Another clan crossed off the list. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Four out of five base clans done. Just one card left for the Stygian and the Remnants. Looking increasingly like um, Glugsider might be our final card to master. I've got a little bit more time here, Twitch chat. Let's go one more. I'll do a Wormkin Umbra. But before that happens, I'm going to take a quick break, refill the legs, and stretch the water. Actually, which which combo is it? Um, Spine Chief plus Umbra. Got it. Let's do a new run. Can I create a custom challenge link? No. I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. Generate challenge. Copy. Paste. There's the challenge link. Toolkit ceremony stamps. Is your challenge here. So if you want to play this run for yourself, get all that 
ridiculous combination of nonsense going on, by all means. That was a great time. So there's that for anybody who wants to enjoy. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to put this run on the start. I think we'll go Shade Splitter here, plus Spine Chief. Click day part. And then I'm going to disappear for a quick break here. Twitch chat, refill the so-called legs. Allegedly stretch the water and all that jazz. I'll be back in five or so minutes for some more Monster Train. Please don't go nowhere. All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Here to get our last crown in Monster Train. We have every other crown set for Wormkin Umbra. Nothing special about this one, I would say. Just one that happens to end up left for last. Triple spell upgrade slots can be amazing for the Wormkin. In particular, there's a couple of infinite combos you can form. with some of the Wormkin cards. Password is Taco18. Thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Grats on getting A20 wins with all four characters.
Took you over a thousand hours to get all four A20s, and that's coming from somebody who beat War of the Chosen XCOM Impossible on Iron Man, which is also pretty tough to do, but tends to be closer to a, uh, a couple hundred hour endeavor, even if you're new to XCOM, to, to make that happen. But yeah, Spire can be thousands. It's pretty ridiculous just how tough this game is, or that game is, since I'm not currently playing it. Let's see, are we Reap or Strike gain a charged Echo? I really like the Reap variant. When you gain a charged Echo on this floor, once per charged Echo, apply Reap to all enemies, essentially doing AoE damage over time. And I love that we started with two Echo Snares to add more Reap. Decayer can single-handedly be your damage solution if you can play enough spells. Whereas the Strike Gain and Echo card leads you to having other units that synergize more often. It can be awkward. Let's go Decayer here. Ooh, Wing Clipping. Spell cards with Consume have a chance to be discarded instead. Amazing with the... Uh, Consume cards of the Wormkin. This can prevent the Etch keyword from activating, but most other effects you can benefit from multiple times when it comes to Consume cards. Let's take Wing Clippings here. Hell's Banners can also be very good, as getting more energy, especially with Morsels, can be a game changer. And we have X Cost cards. Yeah, this is pretty good, actually, the Hell's Banners. Hmm. And Power of Knowledge actually wants us to consume our cards. Okay, I'll go Hell's Banners here. And we'll definitely take a unit draft. So each charged Echo we gain, which is gained whenever we play a card with this purple crystal border, each time we gain a charged echo, we'll apply reap to all enemy units on the floor. And that can be pretty helpful. Enemies with the reap debuff take damage equal to the stacks of reap times the number of charged echoes on the floor. So the more echoes, the more damage. Kills those two. We want to put more reap on this guy. More damage. Forty five damage. I like it. No need to use that up top, correct? Correct. though. 
<laughs> that armor's made quite a big difference here. Oh well. Gremlin Nom, thanks for the three months of support. How's it going, Digster? Having two identical route choices for a floor on the map, do you go left or right? Close your eyes and click randomly. That's, that's all I got for you. Don't think I have a natural preference there. Bogflies are cool. Bogflies scale their damage with the number of charged echoes, giving us more reason to, to stack more echoes. And this one's naturally infused, too. I like it. And an infused immortal trade. Apply life steal and ember drain, helping keep a unit alive longer. Interesting. I don't love that, but I don't hate it either. Good for keeping our spine chief alive, in fact. <clears throat> Although the spine chief's base damage is not that high. It's still good sustain, after all. Perils of production with holdover could definitely be a, a big thing for us. It's not infused, though. I'm gonna grab this immortal trade with the infuse. Do we take an infused crucible warden, gaming damage shield on gorge? Be a good frontline tanker for um, the spine chief, I suppose. Although then we can't feed it morsels, as we won't have any capacity on the floor. Alloyed construct also here, but similarly difficult to use. Is there any way to block Ember Drain? There's a few ways. You can put the Ember Drain on a unit that's going to die. For example, you can play the Ember Drain card on a morsel. Often the Ember Drain cards add statuses that you don't want to put on a morsel, but sometimes it can work, like with uh, Perils of Production especially. Another option is to remove Ember Drain by removing all debuffs. There is a Melting Remnant card that can do this, but I think only Melting Remnant can remove the debuff. I like the infusion of the Crucible Warden quite a bit, too. Plus 10, plus 10, damage shield 5 is pretty strong. How do I determine which boss relic to take in Monster Train? It's usually pl pretty clear whether or not you need... Um... whether or not you need capacity. So usually the choice is between card draw or extra energy. I find that there's lots of ways to get additional energy in Monster Train. Um, artifacts in particular that provide energy tend to provide lots of it, such that you don't need the boss version of it. Whereas card draw is much harder to come by, so I usually default to card draw and then take advantage of the free energies that I can find wherever they are. That means, yeah, it's usually about 70% of the time card draw. If I have, for example, um, Volatile Gauge, so I've already got lots of card draw, then I might not take the draw further. Or Awoken Clan sometimes has too much draw and doesn't need more draw. But usually you want more draw. Okay, Large Stone being offered. Interesting. Maybe. And what are you? Bog Deep Cocoon. Infuses Trample. That's kind of cool. That's really cool, actually. Kinhost Carapace can be kind of neat also. Bog Deep Cocoon has Shell 12. Means you need to feed it 12 charged echoes to get it to hatch. Pretty tough to do. The game needs to talk you out of picking card draw. That's a good way to describe it, I think. And I can infuse right away here. Hmm. Crucible Warden with Trample. Or Bogfly with Trample. I guess Crucible Warden goes on a separate floor from our champion. That's fine. Hmm. 
Yeah, let's grab the uh, Bug Deep Cocoon. I want to infuse this. Seems like a very cool infusion. And then we can add Large Stone, too, if we want to. Make a really big Crucible Warden. Four capacity base. Hard to feed morsels, too. Is that a terrible thing? Not so bad. It's not so bad. Can also reroll instead of buying the Large Stone. I'm planning on going to another Merchant of Steel, I think. Don't plan on using the Hellvent. So that to me says we take the Large Stone upgrade. Do this. Make something big. And then try to add quicker multi-strike onto it at the next merchant. That's my line of thinking anyway. And then the bog fly can probably sit behind the spine chief or something. Onward. The spikes. Ah, the spikes. Fair enough. Good news is we should be able to kill most things pretty easily here. At least I hope so. works, Dewey's. Excellent work. Life steal is actually quite good on Spine Chief here. Now have some reap. Those squeals, though. Nom. An infused extract card can be very powerful here. We can stack health on Spine Chief, and it can potentially give us multiple charged echoes. I like it quite a bit. Echo transfer also tempting, but because it doesn't have the infusion, I'm going to lean towards echo infusion here. And I quite like Packed Morsels, another Morsel card, also with Infusion. And we want to stack Infusions to make the version of Spine Chief that we're using most effective. That's the ploy, anyway. Quick is offered for our uh, big Crucible Warden here. I might want to reroll for Multi-Strike, though. 
What are you? <clears throat> bog chrysalis. You can summon bog flies. I don't totally hate having a, an egg on the floor with the spine chief. Kinhost could also be an acceptable herring for our chief here. If we infuse the egg into the bog fly, it's just three flies in one. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Or we could infuse the fly into the egg. Not the worst, actually. Makes the flies scale harder with echoes. The additional summon flies only have five health, though. They're not that good. Now, if you make the bog fly endless, it's a bit different. That's quite good. Seems like an ample opportunity to actually use kin host to me. Grab the kin host here. see. Anything to dupe? Not yet. I could put quick on the kin host, actually. Maybe that's better? Maybe that's better. And I have money? I do have money. Okay, so let's go quick on kin host carapace. And then reroll. I think that's what I want. Yeah, there's the multi-strike. Perfect. Take the money. Add multi-strike to Crucible Warden. 55 by 2 is much better. Especially with Trample. And you can just have 10 more attack power. I think we're going to infuse the fly into the carapace here. Unless I find something better. But yeah, 110 is pretty decent. And we can add 25 health onto one of our units. Or we can add 10 health onto every unit. We'll lose the ability to heal, but as this clan combo, we never had it to begin with. Actually, no, we, we lose the ability to lifesteal. Hold on. That actually does matter. Because of uh, Immortal Trade. So let's add more health onto... I guess the Warden. Is fine. You could put it on the carapace as well. Makes a better front tank for our champ. Okay, we'll do the carapace. Going on. Carapace first, which is fine. We can do Spine Chief, Bogfly, Carapace all on the same floor here. And it'll be a big Carapace, too. The more echoes we have when playing this, the bigger it becomes. That's pretty big. Should have done that on the bottom. Oops. Okay. We have to use the...
the reap. Start killing stuff here. you. Antwok, thanks for the prime sub in the 17 months. So close to that year and a half. Thank you, thank you. Wow, you just win against Daedalus. No problem. Oh yeah, because we've got a 40 damage, 1 health Bogfly, that's why. Good job, Bogfly. Watch out for the wings. But whose wings? Haligonian says, super weird edge case inspire. Assume Necronomicon, Fiendfire, Normality, Dark Embrace. If Fiendfire is the second card you play, Dark Embrace draws the Normality between the first and second Fiendfire. If the first Fiendfire is the second card you play, then you're allowed to play the third card and the second one will go off. If the First Fiend Fire is the third card you play, and a Dark Embrace draws the normality. I think the second one will stop, and your character will say, I can only play three cards per turn. I think you would be prevented from the, the double tap effect in that case. Oh my. Multi Strike? Extract health or gain charged echoes. I like that this is two and one and increases our max echoes. Let's go unearthed remains here. I see some real, real utility there. Shard Soul Carver can gain armor and strength off of playing infused cards. I don't think we need more cards than we currently have, though. I think our core strategy is already in place. And we're just doing our damnedest to make it work. Yeah, if Time Eater would stop the Necronomic Necronomic copy, love that word, then so will uh, normality. Hmm. Remove to an artifact or go here. Don't have that much money for the Merchant of Magic. But there's a couple discounts I'd really appreciate, actually. That said, two removes is also good, and we can get two more here. Let's go um, Unstable Vortex Artifacts. Get the heal. Oh, we can go Sketches of Salvation. Summon four random units to the middle floor, although that kind of ruins the Crucible Warden, unfortunately. And the Kinhos Carapace. No, we don't want that. Although I might take more capacity in the middle floor. That would mean the Crucible Warden would have more feeding room there. And that solves the Morsels versus Divinity problem, too. Sure. We'll take mine jacks. Those jacks are mine. 
I'll also remove two train stewards, of course. I do like the Infector cross path here. Strike, gain one charged echo means that this unit automatically applies reap to enemy units at the end of each turn. As well as scaling the bog fly repeatedly. It also means if we get second turn Kinhost Carapace, they're a bit stronger. Let's take it. This allows us to get multi strike from the third upgrade, and then we can apply reap twice per turn. And having two Echoes on each floor to start is very good. I also really like Mark of an Exile with uh, the Spine Chief, as the Spine Chief has pretty good base health, so adding more to it is substantial. But base charge looks excellent here. Onwards and upwards, or downwards. I'll take Spikes. I'm feeling good. Boo! Boo hoo! I'm supposed to go middle. Minus 40, huh? Alright, you're getting Immortal Trade then. Kid. Guess we could have done that. Doesn't matter. Hundred and eight reap damage, by the way. This version of Spine Chief can stack an enormous amount of reap. And charged echo is both. Which can be very strong. Spikes. Perfect. Floors have max echoes, that's good. So during relentless boss combats, the Spine Chief gaining one Echo on attack is kind of a big deal, because each time they attack, they're going to both apply more stacks of Reap and increase the number of charged Echoes, such that each of those stacks of Reap will do more damage. End result being the Reap damage stacks to inordinate amounts here. 120. hundred ninety two. 234, 280, and they perish. Although not this guy for some weird reason. Get the Mask of Penumbra. If we play a Morsel unit, we get to draw one. That's quite good with the banners. 
happy about that. And I'm also very happy with Return Soul. Return a spell card from the discard pile. Give it Infused, minus one cost, and Consume. So we can get more charged echoes way more easily. Although almost every card is already infused. That last part's not that good, but we can still do some fun stuff with it. Recall and Resonance are also options, but I like the Return Soul the most, usually. Trigger Feeding. We can eat more morsels this way. Hmm. And it's infused and zero cost? You know what? Sure. The more zero cost infused cards we have, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe should have taken a harder look at Void Binding, but it's all good. It's all good. We do get minus two cost for Unearthed Remains. I'd love to Eternal Stone this card, actually. Let's check the caverns first. Could be a spell in here. Ember Deposits. Gain Vengeful Shards and an Abandoned Stave, giving us more energy per turn for every two Blight cards. Or three Calcified Ember now, turn them into upgraded versions of themselves later. Be like little Adrenaline cards, great with the Prismal Dust. Sure. Remove the Rubble. We get three curses for now, but in two rings, we'll get a big bonus. And currently we're doing pretty well, so I'm not afraid. And there's Eternal Stone. Okay, let's do it. Let's Eternal Stone Unearth Remains. Zero cost. Or I could even hold over it. Ooh, hold on. Not hold over. That would be spicy. That would be really spicy. Is there artifact mastery? Nah, things get, artifacts get filled out in the logbook just uh, seeing them. You don't need to win with them or do anything special. Am I sure I want to do this? I think so. It does bring us to 105 shards already. But that's okay. And we do get another Merchant of Magic next floor. Okay, we'll look for Holdover here. Yeah, Unearthed Remains infused with Holdover would be absolutely nuts with this version of Spine Chief. Just crazy. And yes, that infusion onto the... <clears throat> Kinho's Carapace is attack power per echo and just five base health. Not a very good infusion, but it'll do. It will do. Stealthy guys are kind of interesting. Makes it a little bit harder to want to put the Spine Chief on the bottom. Although I believe I still will. Crucible Warden goes in the middle this time. We've learned our lesson. Quick is going to be useless on the bottom, though. I could put Spine Chief and the Carapace Sky on top. The damage shield will work well against the minions here, too. Actually, yeah, let's go Spine Chief on top this time.
kill the big ones. Delicious. Delicious. Be taking that back. You won't make it any further. Let's see about that. Wow, that just beats the uh, boss here on its own. We don't even need the top floor. Nom. GG. Is the order of unit or spell infusions ever relevant? So the order of the upgrades? I don't. Uh, I don't believe so. I don't think that it ever matters. Hmm. More energy, huh? I like this. And we go merchant of magic one more time here. We'll get cheaper merchant costs, which I quite like with our hoard of money. I'm gonna remove... Possibly power of knowledge. I think at this point we can consider removing immortal trade, but having a heal is pretty good, actually. Get rid of some of our basic stuff. Not sure I want to remove consume from anything else. Although um, removing consume from the morsel card is pretty good. Don't like morsels that much though. So kinda whatever. No holdover. Permafrost is okay on Feast. Better on Soul Crushing Guilds. So that we can stun the boss as it comes in. Did not get holdover. I'll give it one more chance to show up.
I'm not gonna purge yet. Onwards! Oh, this is, uh, Guiltfell too? Yikes. Hmm. Spell chain. I can make the Soul Crushing Guilt spell chain too. That's really good. Then when I play it, it creates a new copy in my hand. Which I can also play. Or retain. Definitely want to have a bottom floor set up. Is it going to be these uh, Absolver enemies that'll cause huge problems if I cannot kill them immediately. Thankfully I can. Become large, my child. 80-80, I like it. like it a lot. Gives me more energy. Seems good. Excellent. Hit them all. my immoral trade. I was just thinking that'd be good. Final wave. Get very dazed. G 
GG. This causes Fell to die to the reap damage, the damage after combat. As you can see, she's able to KO our units, but with six turns of daze, we can accumulate a lot of charged echoes. And therefore, a lot of reap as well. So she wins, but then takes 750 damage and just keels over dead. Hmm, the Shroud Spike could be pretty good on our Crucible Warden here. Echoes of the Past and Eternal Kinstone are not bad. Unremovable Echo is decent. Adding attack power per Echo could be okay, although I'm not likely to stack enough on the Crucible Warden to be really good. The fact that it has an infusion on it already is pretty solid, though. You can definitely apply plus 24 attack power to our Crucible Warden to help keep up the killing power. But it looks like our champ is going to do most of the work here. I'm going to take Shroud Spike. And I think we continue to take card draw, especially now that we're going to turn these Calcified Ember into Excavated Ember, which will give us energy and more card draw. And then we can really start to break stuff. Convert all Calcified Ember to Excavated Ember, which can be upgraded, by the way, and have three upgrade slots as they count as spells. Which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, they're not infused, but they can be made infused by a couple of effects. We're also going to give multi-strike to our champion here, Infector 2. That means we'll get two charged echoes per combat round and apply four reap per combat round, which is very strong. We're going to go to the caverns find the Historian. I'll take a one-time gold bonus, sure. Could even get quite a bit of money off this. Yeah, if your music sounds uh, weird or, or you're buggy sounding, then it's uh, a Twitch problem and you need to refresh. We get Holdover Unearthed Remains. I've never seen that before and I'm really hoping it's as silly as I want it to be here. You can upgrade this to give you 40 gold. <laughs> Spend 20 gold, gain 40 gold. Hello, anyone? Anyone at all? Make our shroud spike better. And have permafrost. A lot more reliable with permafrost. Did I Eternal Stone that pack morsels? No, I didn't. I'll kill... keep three. Can you spell chain the money bag? Yes, I believe you can. Is it actually helpful? Not necessarily. But yeah, you can. Is there a way to remove Purge from cards? There is one way that I know of. A special event leads to getting a special artifact called Hope for Peace that says spells that have Purge have Consume instead. From there, you can put an Eternal Stone to remove the Consume and have a card that is normally Purge but with no, no keyword at all. And that's very strong. Oh, well, those are spicy. Those are some spicy enemies. Those are too spicy. Hmm. Make 
pretty big kin host, and I can give it lifesteal. That'll be good enough to tank on the bottom. So we'll go mid and bottom, as before. It's fine. Steel. Keep it damage shields. Now it lives and then heals. Seems good. It's a ludicrous amount of damage that you're taking. Should be healing to full. I guess full is not that many hit points. talking. Minus four. Okay, eat. Eat this morsel 14 times. Go. Good work, kid. do so much damage. Hundred and twenty-four damage. All right. Simply ludicrous. left in the discord pile. Can put a mortal trade on 
our spine chief. In fact, we can do it twice. It's not doing unearthed remains next turn. I'm okay with that. Look at all these charged echoes. We do 640 damage, allegedly. But wait, there's more. Here, have some days, friend. And have some more. Spine Chief Solos Nephil the Wingless General. Observe. Bonk. 1,056 reap damage. KO's the boss. GG! Spit Bucket, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Return a consumed spell to the top of the draw pile. I have a couple of reasons to want to do that. Grubble seems good, because it gives back three energy. It's a two energy card. And do we dupe or remove? I like the Merchant of Magic more, probably. What would I duplicate? We could duplicate the Shroud Spike. We could duplicate Soul Crushing Guilt. We could duplicate the Unearthed Remains. Actually, I want to do that. This Unearthed Remains seems like it's breaking the game. So, let's break the game with it. Gorge happens twice. That's really good on Crucible Warden, actually. That's a ton of damage shield. Don't think we're going to need it, but I'll take it just in case. Shadow Box won't be that good, because I don't think we actually play 20 Morsels. Extra upgrade slot on units. Hold on. So we can actually add quick to the Crucible Warden if we want to. Neat. Kinho's Carapace doesn't get another upgrade slot, though, because it has the Health Stone. Hmm. I guess. Could avoid pilling the carapace the first time we see it. I kind of need it for tanking early, but uh, yeah, it could get huge if we delay it, right? Absolutely huge. I wish that seemed more appealing. doesn't, though. Or minus two cost. Eh. Seems fine. Anything I want to purge, then? Most of these have a real purpose. I can purge powers of knowledge. Is what I can do. Minus two on Grovel is a big deal. I guess you could argue that. Yeah, with the X cost cards, it's kind of a big deal. Shards are a big deal, too, though. I'm gonna say no. Just buy a crappy trinket. This could help in Seraph. And we fight Seraph the Patient, who I think is gonna get overwhelmed by Reap. If we do this correctly. Yeah. Good reason to go on top, question mark. I'm sold. I 
Let's do that now for a really big carapace. Fracture. Carapace. 155 attack, 130 health. Pretty good. And Seraph takes quite a bit of damage from Reap on turn one and every turn hereafter. Get hammered, sir. Damage shield here, do this. That way, the melee weakness won't matter as much. Definitely gonna keep stacking Reap on Seraph, though. 